Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the friendly confines of Warrior Center here at Dayton Christian High School. We're excited to bring another opportunity for men's basketball to those that are viewing from outside of our area. We appreciate you joining us this evening. My name is Matt Baker. I get the privilege of being the head of school here at Dayton Christian. With me for color analyst is Tyler Hodge. Tyler, say hi to the people. Hello, everybody. Excited to have this uh, event tonight because it brings in the number one uh, team in the uh, Metro Buc Buckeye Conference right now, and that is the Dayton Christian Warriors against the Middletown Christian Eagles. So it's going to be an exciting matchup tonight. Uh, before we get started, we do want to bring up uh, Coach Chip James. And for those that didn't get to see it in the stream the other day, we're going to give you an idea of what he thinks about the season coming up. Thank you for joining me, Coach. Uh, we have Coach Chip James here with us, the head coach of boys basketball, uh, back at the helm after a previous stint. For those uh, listeners and viewers that don't know, can you talk a little bit about your first run and why you decided to come back? Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I was brought in in the summer of 2008. Uh, and the previous coach had taken a job down in Florida and needed a replacement. I was chomping at the bit, begging everybody I knew at Dayton Christian to give me a shot at it. I had coached three previous years at another Christian school nearby and felt like I was ready. Uh, actually, a couple of my former players were here, and so it was a perfect time for me to take over. I already had good familiarity with the program and the school and even the players. So it was a perfect fit, and we turned that into a Final Four run in the uh, spring of 09, so that very first season. Uh, the program had not won a tournament game the previous eight years, not a single game. So for us to go and reel off six victories in a row in the tournament was pretty amazing. It was an unforgettable ride and uh, stayed two more seasons after that. So then in the spring of 2011, decided it was time to step away and focus on the family and the job. And uh, here we are back again. Right. Awesome. Um, so talk a little bit just about your general offensive philosophy. So those of that are watching uh, that want to get into the nuts and bolts a little bit, uh, what, what are they going to see offensively from this team? Yeah, hopefully they're going to see some guys who cut hard. You just want to be hard to guard. One of our team mottos, whether it's offensively or defensively, is just to be hard to play against. Mm -hmm. Don't be easy to play against. And our team is a, a little bit size challenged. We're, we're undersized. And so rather than some of the traditional stuff that people see, like a, like a ball screen uh, or pick and roll, we feel like teams are just easily going to switch that mm -hmm. against us because we're all really similar. Mm -hmm. It's an easy switch. And so hopefully viewers will see us slipping screens. Yeah. So we go screen and we actually, it's like a fake screen and we turn it into a really hard cut and just do that over and over until the defense wears down. Excellent. And when it comes to the defensive side of the ball, everybody gets excited on turnovers that turn into points. Uh, talk about your defensive mantra. Yeah, our defense right now is the thing that people locally are talking about a little bit. Uh, we've been really proud of that. We're running a, a very unique defense. It's like a 2-1-2. Two, uh, sort of looks like a 2-3 when you first look at it, but it's not a zone. So people hear 2-1-2, two, two, they think it's a zone. It's actually a pressure defense, more pressure than we would put on with like our man-to-man. -man. So when we're in our 2-1-2, two, two, we're trying to pressure you and create easy opportunities for ourselves on offense. And do you think because of body similarity that pressure defense in the half court works for this team? Yeah, we're trying to hide the fact a little bit that we are a little bit smaller, but also take advantage of our quickness and uh, some of our strengths there. Like these kids have played some pressure defense in the past. They like to get up and guard you a little bit. And so we're just playing on that. Awesome. Uh, can you talk a little bit about a preview of the season and a preview of maybe some of the players in particular? Yeah, absolutely. So most people are talking about uh, how it's a new era for the team. Uh, they lost three really key seniors, two of which scored a thousand points in their career mm -hmm. each, two of which are playing college basketball right now. So a big void offensively to fill. Last year's team scored 1,400 points and 1,100 of them graduated. So <laughs> I don't know the math. I think it's around 80, 81% uh, is gone. And so it's an awesome opportunity for this year's team to step up and step into new roles. But sometimes there's some uh, discomfort doing that and, and growing pains early in the season. Maybe we're seeing a little bit of that, but we think there's a great opportunity for this team to grow. Uh, and become great offensive players. We have two seniors. One of them is Seth Edgerton, and Seth is a great story. I, I hope Dayton Christian rallies around Seth this year. He scored six points on the varsity team last year, six total points. So he was more of a junior playing JV. Mm -hmm. 
And so far this year, he's third in the conference in scoring at almost 19 points per game. Wow. So he's one of those kids who, who took that role and said, I'm here, mm -hmm. I'm going to step into that, and I'm welcome to the challenge. So pretty fun to see Seth. And then, um, you know, we've got one sophomore, Rylan, uh, one freshman, Rylan Slavens, that's, that's athletic. Uh, and then the bulk of our players are sophomores and juniors seems like so gotcha and you got to talk about the rival games so i'm new to dayton christian as well you're returning back what are the games that everybody needs to mark on their calendar well good question so dayton christian is in the uh, position in our conference that we are kind of circled on everyone's calendar i tell people who aren't familiar with our league like we're kind of the duke or the north carolina um you know we we win the all sports trophy a lot the boys basketball team has won the league three years in a row. Obviously, I had nothing to do with that, but they won three in a row. They're kind of uh, at the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. So we get circled on a lot of calendars, definitely, on a lot of schedules. Uh, for us, uh, we love to play, um, I guess we love to play Legacy Christian. That, that'd be one, just because they, we used to have that relationship as like sister schools, mm -hmm. and they've just got a great team this year, so it's a huge challenge for us. That's one for sure. Um, Middletown Christian's always feisty. Mm -hmm. It's always a feisty game. So those are just two of them. Awesome. That's exciting. Do you want to leave any thoughts with the viewers or uh, just uh, one final idea? Yeah, just uh, we are trying to represent Dayton Christian to the fullest every time we step on the court. We're trying to be salt and light through basketball, which is tough uh, in some ways when you're out there trying to compete and trying to win. Mm -hmm. But we're doing the best we can and trying to take big steps with these guys on and off the court. We're just thankful for everybody's support. Well, thank you for joining us, and we look forward to a great season. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Their way after just a couple games. Uh, so Tyler, as we get into this game with about nine minutes left before uh, the game starts, tell us a little bit about what you got to see on Friday from Dayton Christian, sorry, Saturday from Dayton Christian, and then also what you're expecting to see based on the stats uh, so far this year. It is Saturday. I seen a team, as uh, Coach James said there, he seen a team that uh, got out and uh, hustled and their intensity uh, came right out of the gate. You know, that game was a big game for Dayton Christian, as every game is. But that was kind of that statement win at the beginning of the year for them to, you know, carry that momentum on, you know, as we get into the grind of the season. You know, on offense, you've seen uh, the guys work as a team, you know, being that intelligent uh, mindset that they had, you know, as Coach James says, they want to be hard to guard. And that comes with intelligence as well and knowing where to go and where to be at at the right time. You know, I've seen them hustle on defense. You've seen these guys get after it in that uh, kind of 2-1-2 two, two, or what What was he talking about there, the defense that the they run, 2-1, two, yeah. two, two, you know. People think it's a lot of time of zone, you know, uh, but it's more of just that help side defense. And, you know, Legacy, they did a great job against Legacy. They, they, they matched the intensity. I think that's what you're going to see tonight. You're going to see the same team come out. They're going to carry that momentum uh, through the game. But one thing, you know, that I hope Coach James is talking to, and he probably is, is, not to get too high on that, you know, get back down to the level that you were at and play ball and not carry that self all the way through and come back out with the big W. And one of those players that, you know, stood up was Seth Edrington. You know, he had a huge game. I think he was probably around 21, 22 points um, for that game. You know, and he's averaging 19. He's the, uh, tied with actually Nate Rose from Middletown Christian as the leading scorers through the first four or three or four games here. Uh, so see him as getting involved real quick. And then also with him, you see uh, Scanlon. He had a big game as well coming off the bench for Dayton Christian. And I think you'll see a lot more minutes from him tonight. Um, and one thing, you know, Dayton Christian's got to keep those points down. They're, uh, you know, 57-4 and 50 against. So I think tonight the defense may be uh, amped up a little bit. Yeah, I looked at the uh, film and, and just a little review. I think there was at least 8 to 10 points on turnovers. Remember, mm -hmm. at the end of the second quarter, beginning of the third quarter, seemed like the turnover bug hit yep. uh, Dayton Christian just a little bit. So uh, we're looking to see if they can make that correction. We had mentioned that that's probably statement number one after good job, good energy, but, hey, we got to cut the turnovers down. So I had the opportunity to talk to Coach Mason um, earlier in the last week, actually. Um, he is a new coach. And this is interesting, Tyler. He actually got the job on October 2nd. Wow. October 2nd. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's already conversations being had. There's games that are already set. Um, and he takes over the helm on October 2nd, coming from a fantastic Mid Milford program. I know the head coach over there. I know the guy that's done some work um, actually in the uh, league that I came from with SBAAC. He was the Goshen head coach. His name is Coach Baker. Uh, great coach. And he left Coach Baker to come over here to take uh, the helm full time. Uh, so they're 2-2 two two right now. He feels like... Uh, 
they should be three and one, have some opportunities. They got away from them, um, but he he wants the to instill a play hard mentality. Uh, these coaches are willing to learn. Uh, he does feel like they've been getting hit by the injury bug just a little bit, so they're kind of just figuring out. Uh, they appreciate that road win that they got earlier this year, and that's going to be needed tonight here yep. in the uh, we call it the friendly confines. Uh, but I, I'll give a, a just a very brief interesting story. So when I was applying for this job of head of school, I wanted to see how the culture was in athletics. So I actually watched this game from last year. Oh, wow. It came down to, if I remember correctly, about a 30 seconds to the end of the game layup by a player that's now playing at the collegiate level uh, in order for uh, Dayton Warriors to win. And uh, the, the kids actually rushed the, the court. It was a, a fun time. So interesting uh, to see that experience for them. And hopefully uh, for the Dayton Christian side, I'm sure they want to feel that same way today. Um, just a little bit of his uh, history. He's actually coming from the Lachlan area, so kind of my neck of the woods. Yeah. We'll call it Southwest Ohio near Cincinnati. Uh, played at Lachlan and then coached as well. Had a couple stops at Goshen, again at Milford, now at Middletown Christian. Excited about creating a program and creating a um, a culture there in Middletown Christian of winning. Uh, you're going to see Joseph Wallace tonight. Uh, really hard to guard kid, a good kid that he likes uh, the way that he's being pushed by Coach Mason. Um, enjoys uh, being the leader and, and getting out there and doing his thing. Wants to get better and always trying to improve. Uh, the, the six four Nate Rose, as you said before, a rebounding machine, a putback machine. Uh, that's who's getting their points, especially uh, as tied with Seth Edgerton to start. Uh, this year at the top of the league. So you're also going to see uh, Manning Miller, a junior, um, kind of that guy that's trying to lead the offense, still working through and understanding what Coach Mason wants to see. Uh, Coach said, you know, they're going to do a good job helping him cut down his turnovers, uh, but likes him being uh, be able to be the one guard, the two guard, and even the three off guard as well. So it's a very versatile young man. When I asked him, hey, what kind of motion or what kind of offense we're going to see tonight, he said, you know, we're a basic motion team. Uh, we've got kind of some what they call the horns principles, you know, using that uh, top of the key or the, the elbows as well. Um, and, and they're going to do a lot of ball screens, a lot of dive to the hoop and, and drive to the hoop. So that's going to be uh, what they see. And then defensively, uh, you know, the, the idea is that they're just going to do a 3-2 matchup. Maybe uh, they were usually run about seven deep, so they're going to push their guys on defense very hard in order for them to, uh, you know, wear themselves out if they have to and then get to the bench for a little bit of a, a breather. Uh, as you stated before, it's a rival game. Uh, with 3.35 left before we start this one, you can feel the excitement starting to build here, the crowd starting to come in. There was JV contest that was won just by one point by Dayton Christian, so the the excitement's already there, the uh, the attitude's already amped up. Um, what are the keys to the game? Well, you've seen Dayton Christian once, you haven't seen Middletown Christian, so if I'm Coach James, what are you saying that we have to do right tonight? You know, I think you hit on it right before, you know, the turnovers, as, we, as if you were watching a contest on Saturday and as we were here, um, Legacy got a lot of points off turnovers and had that uh, momentum come back against their way. So I think Coach James is telling them to eliminate the mistakes um, and just try to take care of the ball as much as possible. Also, you know, is just getting out of the hoop and going. You know, they did a great job of that Saturday. Um, they actually were faster paced than actually what I think even Coach James may have even thought. You know, right. they were up and down. They were going. They were running hard. And I think that's what he wants to keep up today if I was him, you know. It's just be able to get out and go. Let's wear them down. Let's get them going. Let's get them into their bench. And let's get them in foul trouble, you know. I think that's another thing. This Saturday's game was actually a pretty clean game, you know. I mean, there wasn't a lot of fouls. And I'm not calling for fouls or anybody to get hurt. But, you know, just being smart and – and wearing them down, and I think that's some of the keys to the game. Yeah, I know. As we were walking out, we were kind of surprised just how early mm-hmm. and how quickly yeah. the game got over because it was so clean. There wasn't a lot of fouls right. and so on and so forth. So, uh, again, the Middletown Christian uh, faithful are kind of coming in to support them. Uh, we'll get a few of those people over here. We're actually going to try to get an interview at halftime with a former player for theirs, for them uh, that's went off to the college ranks as well. So I uh, appreciate you joining us. We have an opportunity for you. A couple uh, during the game, but if you would like to call and give a shout out to a player or let us know where you're watching from, that's going to be 513. Take this number down 513 655 7438. Again, 513 655 7438. Tyler and I will give you the question of the game midway through the second quarter, Christmas themed, of course. Because we're right before the uh, fun Christmas season, and we all know the reason for the season, yes. and that is Jesus Christ. So we appreciate you joining us this evening. We're excited to bring this great contest. And while we're talking about opportunities for uh, you know our Christian walk, well, let's talk a little bit about Christian education. So both of these uh, institutions are Christian facilities. 
Um, so the uh, Middletown Christian Eagles and the Dayton Christian Warriors both believe that you can uh, marry both education and your faith at the same time. So if you are interested or know someone that's interested, um, you can use the QR codes on, on the screen right now to learn more about the EdChoice Scholarship, which allows you to use state money in order to go to a private institution, including Dayton Christian or Middletown Christian or you can learn more about DC as well. So uh, as a head of school, I want to make sure everybody understands we don't compete mm -hmm. against other Christian schools. We want everybody to go to Christian right. schools. We want everybody to extend the kingdom. If you choose to come here, that's awesome. If you don't want to come here, that's fine. Just go to another school and Middletown Christian is one of those choices. So we're going to do introductions here for just a minute. We're also going to do the pledge or we're going to do the anthem mm -hmm. and then we're going to come back on the air in just a moment.
All right, we're getting set for action as we're going to start here in just a moment. To the middle of the court comes number 35 for the Middletown Christian Eagles. That's going to be Nate Rose, the senior that we listed before as a rebounding machine. Uh, so he's on the court to take the tip as well as Matthew Dabble. Uh, also, you'll see Mason Woodall, Ryan Slavens getting the start, Girdwood, Edgerton, and Slavens immediately takes the ball but decides to kick it back out in order to find the offensive start here. Woodall running from the point up top. Defensively, we talked about that 3-2 matchup, and that's exactly what they're in. Kicking the ball outside to Slavens across to Edgerton. Edgerton with a quick shot, and it's partially blocked. Goes off the side of the rim and out of bounds. That's going to go to the Eagles. Yeah, good movement there by Dayton Christian, getting the jitters out early. Uh, good shot block, but I believe it was, like you said, partially tipped there by number 35, Nate Rose. It'll be interesting to see how they go against that 3-2 matchup zone because you're going to have some. Oh, and a quick steal by Slavens. He's got someone trailing. He pushes it to Girdwood. Girdwood gets fouled in the process underneath. And just 7.25 left in the first quarter, and there's already a foul for the Eagles. So we're going to take that to the line as it was in the act of shooting. Girdwood for two. First shot is up. It rolls off the back of the iron and drops to the side. So far this year, it looks like uh, Girdwood has a 50% free throw percentage, missing the first of the two, putting up the second, and the statistics ring true as they do normally. So he's <laughs> one for two from the line. First point of the game is for the Warriors. one nothing is their lead. Quick turnover by the Eagles. Number three, that is Miller, and we had talked about him uh, from Coach Mason earlier. Said great player, can do everything from the one, the two, the three, but he does need to cut down a little bit on the turnovers, and we see one caused by him early on in this contest. So the ball gets inside. Looking at that horn perp, and up and in is Girdwood. That's going to be two more points for him. That's three nothing. You good high low action there. Yeah, and all three were by Good Girdwood so far. I guess because Dr. Girdwood was the prayer, you know, he's obviously pretty excited at this point. So three, and that's good. That'll tie the game. The Eagles, number 44, that's Joseph Wallace. So Wallace and Rose are more than likely going to be your lead scorers. They get the ball to the middle. Dabble with a nice little pop gets his own rebound. Almost the second rebound, but that is corralled by Rose as he's going to bring the ball up and moves it over to Wallace quickly. Wallace tries to find an opening, but that 2-1-2 defense doesn't give him the opening that he's looking for. The ball's tipped out of bounds by Mason Woodall. So just give a first a couple glances here. Tyler, what are you seeing from both teams? You know, from uh, Dayton Christian offensively, you know, they got that high-low going down there with that 3-2. You know, you get the guy up high. And then for, uh, you know, Middletown Christian, they got the opposite wing is what's going to be open on this, uh, you know, 2-2-1 two, two, type thing that Dayton Christian's running here. So, Another turnover by the Eagles. The ball gets pushed, but it's going to be stopped by Girdwood. He gets it to Edgerton. Edgerton to Woodall. Woodall to Dabble. He wants a drive, but the ball's taken off of his leg and now out of bounds. Dabble looks like he might have an injury there on that left hip. He was kind of checking his hip and uh, checked underneath his shorts, and I saw uh, quite a mark there. Yeah. So uh, may maybe he's had a tumble at some point uh, since Saturday. So that's going to be a kick. 
But continue, Tyler. You saw what out of the Eagles so far. You, you know, the Eagles, what I was saying on offense, they are, they're moving around. They're running that motion. They're doing a lot of ball screens. But that opposite corner wing, you know, corner shot is going to be open. They have to keep looking for that. And that's what Legacy lived on all Saturday night. So Dabble pushing the ball as hard as he can. Drives into the hoop. He's fouled in the process. That's going to be two, which takes him to the line. And it's already a second foul on the Eagles. Looks, looks like Dabble there, you know, uh, his free throw percentage for this year, I believe, 61 and a half. 61 and a half percent is correct. So we'll see if he can put a couple in here. This is going to be the front of a two. First one's good. 539 left in the first quarter. 4-3 is your score as Dabble puts the Dayton Warriors ahead. Tell a friend if you're watching, we appreciate you sharing this link with someone. Also, let them know that we're going to be – Broadcasting this game as well as the varsity girls game that will immediately follow this one. Potential turnover, but the ball stay in the hands of the Eagles. So it looks like defensively the 2-1-2 hasn't been figured out just yet by Middletown Christian, but they've got plenty of time in order to do that. Remember, if you want to send a shout-out, you want to let us know where you're watching and listening from, 513-655-7438. Ball gets inbounded. 35 is Nate Rose with the ball at the top of the key. Surveying the defense of Dayton Christian, and they're able to trap him at the top. He is able to get that ball out. Nice rebound there by Nate Rose. That's why he's leading the league in rebounding. Uh, Dayton Christian. The potential quick turnaround, a miss by Girdwood. He's going to take a quick two, and that's good. So five points for Girdwood so far out of the six total for the Warriors. Girdwood a little excited there. Number 11 causes the foul against... Middletown Christian, number 34, which is Greg Mahon, is going to be the Eagle taking it out of bounds, setting the offense for Middletown Christian. Miller with the ball in his hand, starts the offense off the left-hand side. Slavens with tight defense, using his body underneath the block by Edgerton. The ball is out to Girdwood. He throws the ball up. He's going to be fouled. That's going to be a second one on Miller, I believe. That's yeah, a huge foul there with Miller. He's the you know leader up front, uh, running the offense. And I think I may have spoke too soon with the with the fouls in the game. This one's been a little bit of aggressive start so far. Four fouls total, three against Middletown Christian, just one for Dayton Christian. At some point in the game, I think I'm going to mess up the Christians. Oh yeah, that, we're going know, to. right. Yeah. It's going to happen at least a couple times. Girdwood. He puts the first one in. Let's see if he can break the stats this time and go ahead and put the second one in and make him two for two and three for four total. And he does. Quick substitution for the shooter. That's Caden Shepard. Girdwood comes out having put seven points out of the eight total for the first quarter. Yeah, he thinks he deserves a break a little bit. He's got seven out of eight points. Give him a little bit of a breather there. 4.30 left in the first quarter. Miller for three off the back of the iron. He'll get it again, this time three or four feet outside of the arc. Gets over to Mahon. Mahon back to Miller. Trying to get it underneath to number 10. That's Liam Likens. That three-pointer is good. That's by Mahon. It's going to be a foul on Dabble. He gets frustrated after the missed underneath layup. You know, good movement down there by Middletown Christian. Dayton Christian has been a little bit more aggressive on the trapping and hasn't been able to get back, and that's what happened there. They jumped a little bit too late and left that open lane there for Mayhem. 
And am I seeing something that maybe Dayton Christian has picked up to try to get the ball back up court as fast as possible? Maybe over video they've seen a lack of transition hustle or speed. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they're getting it across half court quicker than I've seen them in the last couple of days. You know, I mean, so I think that might be something they've seen is Middletown Christian not, you know, as quick as they are getting back. So it's 8-8 right now, 347 left in the first quarter. Underneath, Middletown Christian calls their set. Miller with a fake and a nice little floater, but it does fall a little bit short. The pass up to Edgerton. He's going to finish, but doesn't doesn't get the call. Actually, should have been a technical foul because they slapped the backboard on an unmade basket, but the refs are going to let that one go. So Middletown Christian with a trap defense. It's going to stay that way after a smart play by yep. Mahon trying to bounce it and did bounce it off the Dane Christian Warrior defender. Yeah, he uh, got himself in a little trouble and noticed that he needed to get the ball out. That's that intelligence. I think that, you know, Middletown Christian and Dayton Christian have both shown. So rebounds, you have the number one rebounder, Nate Rose. You have the number three rebounder, Joseph Wallace. You have the number two scorer, also tied, I should say, for the number one scorer, and number five scorer in the in the conference right now, all on the court at the same time. Yeah, uh, you know, that was a big, that was a great effort by everybody, Rose. Um, uh, he got up and... Flew more than I thought I ever would. Slavens comes off to the bench. Back into the game is Girdwood. So you've seen six Dayton Warriors so far. A seventh has entered now. And Caden Shepard with a quick shot. And two makes it 10-8. That's one thing you're going to see is that uh, foul shot, you know, right there at the top is going to be open all night, especially with that 3-2. If I'm guessing, Middletown Christian is going to pick their poison. They're not going to let three-pointers, and they're going to say, oh, another shot. That's a three by Mahon. He's got two threes so far, six points total, 11-10, so a lead for the Eagles. Woodall, he's got good defensive on him. Gets it over to Shepard. Like you said, that foul shot, but that time is trapped with the spin. Gets his own rebound. Puts it up on the other side. The score and the foul. Yeah, it looked like it was on Rose there, but good movement by Shepard. You know, that spin move, that, that top of the key is going to be open. Uh, but good job by Middletown Christian jumping, uh, but good ball movement on Dayton Christian's part. They consider that the first foul on number 35. And that is, uh, that's Nate Rose. Uh, so it's going to be four fouls total against the two fouls for the Warriors. 12-11 is your score for the Warriors. One point advantage. 2-14 left in the first quarter. And Shepard at the stripe. He'll finish the and one. Mahon this time with pressure defense. Kind of a light three-quarter pressure defense. Mahon, ball movement, gets into the middle of the court. Gives it over to Rose. Rose gets the ball back from Likens. He turns, gets into the middle of the paint. No opening there. Dabble with good defense. The rebound into the hands of Woodall, but it'll go outside on the off of the hands of Middletown Christian. You know, that's what Middletown Christian wants. They want that ball in the middle to Rose, and then Likens down there on that bottom key, you know, bottom block. That's going to be open too, especially if Dayton Christian can't rotate back on those passes. Yeah, we'll see what uh, Middletown Christian, they're, they're making a slight change. It's still a 3-2, but this time they brought Rose up to the line. And a nice little finger roll. Tried to finish there, but Shepard's going to fall short. Rebound by Rose. That three-pointer is off the mark. The rebound goes to the Warriors. Woodall surveys the court, gets it up to Edgerton. Edgerton resets the offense back to Woodall. Woodall takes the drive, kicks it out to Dabble to Girdwood. Good defense on him. So Woodall's going to reset, take a breather here and see what he's got. Edgerton open on the corner, and that's good for a three. Good ball movement there. Uh, Middletown Christian did a good job jumping, but just eventually got worn down there. Now we saw Edgerton get hot in the fourth quarter of Saturday's game. And when I say hot, I'm talking two steals, return for two buckets each, 
and two three pointers back to back. So he he got on fire there for just, a little bit. And just like Coach James has said, that that gentleman there last year, you know, averaged six points for the whole season, you know, and this year he's the top leading scorer tied uh, this year. So it just shows the dedication that he has to his craft and to his game uh, for this game. Mahon with Slavens all over and playing tight defense gets the ball underneath to Wallace and a nice give and go. Nice play there by Middletown Christian. Very good movement by Likens there. And a nice shot and answer by Shepard. Shepard's getting warmed up. I think that's his uh, you know, two or three jump shot right there, and I think he's liking that spot. Turnover, but then the ball goes immediately back into the hands of Middletown Christian. Wallace with the shot. He misses. Rose with the rebound. Two defenders on him. The block happens by Dabble. It gives Slavens the opportunity to go out wide. He finishes with the right hand. He's fouled in the process, but they let him play. This time, off the mark is that long three-quarter shot. 18-13 is your score. We'd like to take a moment and say thank you to our game sponsor, TQL. TQL Foundation is allowing this game tonight. We appreciate this triple header, and they've been our game sponsor. We'll talk a little bit more about them in the future. But, Tyler, tell us what you're seeing out of the first quarter. What I'm seeing out of the first quarter, Middletown Christian, let's just go with that side defensively. They're doing a good job. They're rotating. They're jumping. Uh, Dayton Christian on the defensive side has seen uh, a lot of different things, I think, on film. They're trapping the first pass, it looks like, most of the time. But another thing is they're getting the ball out of the bucket or on their turnovers and getting it past half court in one pass. You know, And I think that's something that Middletown Christian's going to have to adjust with and say, hey, we got to get back or at least have one guy back, you know. And another thing I think we kind of got to tune up on both sides of the ball, you know, Middletown Christian and Dayton Christian is boxing out. You know, there's not they're, they're crashing the boards hard, giving great effort. But if they box out a couple of people, I think they can get a couple more offensive rebounds on both sides, you know, Dayton Christian and Middletown. Yeah, Dayton Christian is winning the turnover battle right now, but the rebound battle clearly to Middletown Christian right now. And I have to quen- send a quick shout out to these Middletown Christian cheerleaders. So I remember all of Saturday's game and not being disrupted one single time by the the legacy cheers. No offense to them, of course. Yeah. But these Middletown Christian cheerleaders are absolutely bringing it already in this first quarter. I feel like they're in the headset here with us. Exactly. And I was like, oh, my. They're doing a great job. So congrats to the coach of the Middletown Christian cheerleaders because their their effort is wonderful here to start this game. So we appreciate you joining us again. Uh, We'll be back to action here, and we know Middletown Christian with a five-point deficit is going to have the ball in their hand to start this second quarter. Miller, with two fouls on him, has to play smart here in the second quarter to avoid that third one. A turnover, unfortunately, is where they start here in the second quarter for Middletown Christian. Woodall brings the ball across the timeline. He turns it over but gets it back to himself. Dabbled in the middle, who takes a hard drive to Slavens. The open shot three is good. Very good movement there, Dabble, finding the open guy, and Slavin's knocking it down. You know, just two games into our broadcast here, another turnover by Middletown Christian in the hands of Slavin's, but eventually it's going to rest in the hands of Miller. Uh, We can definitely see why Slavin's, the freshman, gets playing time. Dabble with a partial block this time, Slavin's with the rebound. Kick to Shepard, tries to find an opening. Takes that little foul shot, floater, and it's good. He's feeling it from that end. I mean, that's he scored all of his points from the top of the key or yeah. the left side. So I think the Middletown Christian is going to have to move Rose up a little higher. Yeah, 15 feet are in, and he's got the steal, does Shepard. Goes up with a Euro step, and good. He's calling a... Oh. Nope. Okay, he, he's allowing it. Looked like a charge like call a charge for, a call. for a moment. I thought, no, nah, I don't think so. So... Like, must have been his A and one symbol. That was his very um, harsh. He made it symbol. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, Shepard from the line, over 50% shooter. He misses that one. The rebound by Edgerton and puts it right back in immediately. 27-13. So if I'm not mistaken, we've got a 9-0 run going. A little more energy by the Warriors in this second half, second quarter. He, Edgerton misses the layup. Woodall drives into a lot of defense, turns around, and gets it to Shepard. The bounce off of the hands of a Dayton Warrior, and it's going to be in the hands of the Middletown Christian Eagles. 
Middletown Christian needed that to happen to break the momentum because Dayton Christian was on an 8-0 run, as you said. I think it's time. As we see here, Coach uh, Mason from Middletown Christian calling a timeout. Yeah, on this timeout, we appreciate again our friends at TQL, TQL Foundation. The Dayton Warriors would like to thank TQL Foundation to, to our uh, for welcoming and uh, and sponsoring our boys and girls basketball games tonight as a premier level game day sponsor and exclusive partner of Dayton, Dayton Christian Athletics. Thanks to TQL Foundation for being our game day sponsor and supporting our student athletes. Go Warriors! So if you look over the boys' basketball championships over the last few years as the Metro Buckeye kind of came back into existence, uh, Legacy Christian's at the top of that. Even Emmanuel Christian snuck in one year. you got Dayton Christian, Yellow Springs. Uh, Middletown Christian still wants to break through that ceiling, basically, and not be just someone that is competitive but actually take home a championship. And they've got two leading scorers. They've got two leading rebounders. Uh, both on the court right now and seeing if they can make a difference with a big win over Dayton Christian. Yeah, for sure. I hope, uh, you know, hopefully Middletown Christian you know, settles down, get back into the rhythm they were in uh, the first quarter there. If you look at steals, where some of these are more turnovers than they are steals, but steals is being led by uh, Parker Burke, young man from Legacy Christian, but right behind him is Mason Woodall with almost three and a half steals per game. Dabble for three. He's going to be off on that one. I think Dabble there wanted a foul. Mahon gets it out. And that's a three for Wallace. Even with a size advantage, it seems like Middletown Christian wants to live or die by the three. Mm Mm-hmm. It, it takes me back to the Kentucky days in Edgerton from way behind the arc. It takes me back to the 90s Kentucky days where it was going to be threes after threes after threes. If they were hot that night, you're in trouble. If they weren't, good for you. Yeah. Oh, in and out goes Mahon's attempt at that three-pointer. Slavens gets the ball but turns it over to Mahon, trying to th- uh, thread the needle a little bit there. Yeah, good ass there by Mahon getting back. Um like we talked about, getting that one guy back so they're not breaking down on the half court. Rose in the corner being double teamed. Uses his elbows trying to get some distance. Wallace gets it out to Mahon. Mahon's your energy. He's your guy. He gets it in under, underneath the Rose. A fantastic find there. That was a great pass there, seeing uh, uh, Rose down there underneath. Dabble with the drive. A hard foul underneath. But they're letting him play a little bit on this end, so that's good. The turnover comes to Middletown Christian's way, and it's going to be in the hands of Mahon. Shepard goes to get that turnover, but it's going to be caused by Mahon by throwing it out of bounds off the right-hand side. So into the game for Middletown Christian is Mason Gross seeing his first playing time of the night, a freshman. Oh, we got another freshman on the board. Let's see how they do. Slavin's a freshman. Back to Woodall. To Shepard gets it underneath to Edgerton. That's a nice play. That was, that a, great was a nice. Move. Play. That was a nice play. You know, setting the ball screen there, um, or not the ball screen, the screen coming off for Edgerton. Great movement. Excellent call by Coach James there. Ball actually hits the rim on away from a pass. It's going to be a turnover by Middletown Christian and a loose ball foul. Seems like they're going to call that on 35. So that will be Rose. Yeah. And I believe that should – no, actually, they're going to call that on 33. So, loose ball foul on 33, which is Jacob Wesco, the sophomore, earns his first mark into the playbook for the evening. Shepard to Woodall, underneath to Dabble with a pump fake and in. Rose trying to get the ball from underneath. Middletown Christian will bring the ball up the court again, 31-18 with 3.57 left in the second quarter. The drive by Middletown Christian is going to fall short. Edgerton's going to get the loose ball rebound. Gives it to Woodall. Fakes one way. Gives it to Shepard the other. The turn, the spin, the block by Gross, I believe. And that's going to be a dunk. Big dunk by Nate Rose. Slamming and finishing 31-20. That gets the bench off of their seats and gets them excited. Maybe the momentum swing that they can get here at the end of the second quarter. Slavens with a missed three attempt.
Wallace gets it to Gross. Gets it out to Mahon. The turnover from Mahon, it's in the hands of Shepard. The three-pointer is off the mark, off the back of the rim, and the rebound. Rebound, a tough rebound, is going to end up in the hands of Middletown Christian. I think the refs are going to have a talk with both of them just to keep the good sportsmen like Nothing dirty, just hard on both ends there playing. This is hard fought uh, yeah. attempt right there. I think he's... The ref is asking Girdwood, who's trying to check into the game, back to the table, making sure that uh, the foul is called. Now the substitutes get to come in. Again, if you want to let us know where you're watching from, 513-655-7438. As we take this pause in the action... Tyler, I've got a question for you. Okay. Well, and, we it's got... a, and it's a question of the game. Okay. So as Middletown Christian brings the ball up, that's gross. I need you to tell me in this Christmas season. And the, and Shepard with the steal, he's got gross trailing behind. That's going to be a foul with the body on gross. And Shepard will go to the line. Perfect timing gives us an opportunity to talk about your favorite childhood Christmas present. Favorite childhood Christmas present. Yeah, I when think... I say childhood, let's keep it, you know, 18 and under. Hmm. Oh, man, I have to think about that. Oh, I okay. Shepard here shooting his free throws. As you're thinking, 513-655-7438. So, again, if you'd like to let us know your favorite childhood Christmas present. You know, for me, you know, it's – I'm old enough to remember the, you know, older PlayStations. Okay. You know, the, the old gray box. Yep. Um, Don't know if many kids nowadays know that. You know, they got – PlayStation 5s or whatever they call it. So that was probably one of the best ones I got. Just the first system I ever had. Excellent. And I'm older than you, so I remember the Nintendo. When I got the original Nintendo console, that was pretty fun. Three-point attempt is missed by Middletown Christian Edgerton as he gets the ball out to Girdwood. Girdwood stops. Misses the layup. He gets fouled in the process, but again, letting him play a little bit. The ball, The bodies are flying everywhere. Let's see what the call is. Jump ball call. It's going to be in the hands of Dayton Christian. So uh, the Nintendo console was definitely a gift, but I remember my F-16 replica G.I. Joe. Oh, oh, it was a fun time. Oh, yeah. That was a big one right there. The wings expanded. It was fun, fun, fun. So Dabble gets the ball from underneath, stops, fakes. He is blocked. I see both teams kind of looking for and the turnover to middle or from Middletown Christian gets it out to Girdwood. He's going to be fouled in the process. Two shots as he's going up. It, it seems like both teams are kind of I don't want to say arguing with refs, but I mean there's a lot of hey why didn't I get this call? Why didn't yep. I get this call? And honestly, at some point you get how they're going to call the game and you got to go accordingly. You know, the refs are letting them play. They're letting them be physical. You know. Mm -hmm. um, if it's not inconsistent to what the players think, unfortunately, that's why they're playing and the refs are refing. Just go ahead and play your game and uh, stay within yourself. You know, that's the biggest part. Of it. Don't get frustrated. Uh, just do what you need to do, play smart, and everything will work out. Foul shot made by Girdwood. The second attempt, the release, a little bit short. Rebound by Middletown Christian. 33-20 is your score with 155 left in the second quarter. Again, if you'd like to let us know. With the turnover by Middletown Christian, it gets to Woodall. Woodall to Girdwood. Girdwood stops, but he's going to be called for over and back. So if you'd like to let us know your favorite Christmas, childhood Christmas present, 513-655-7438. Those that send that in will share over the air. You know, one thing, Middletown Christian, I think that I think Coach Mason's going to hit on is don't forget the bounce pass. You know what I mean? A lot of their turnovers have been trying to throw it across the zone of Dayton Christian, and, and Dayton Christian's got the height advantage this game, you know, with, for their advantage. So they gotta they got to bounce pass it. Yeah, Dayton Christian doesn't have a really tall player. They do have some consistency across multiple players. Mm -hmm. That's 6'1", 6'2", you know, guards that are 6'1", 6'2", maybe – uh, that's a little different than the the height uh, when having one particular person maybe like a legacy did that right. was six eight yeah gross with good defense but he is going to be called for the foul 
We might have to check that one as they put it on the scoreboard. I believe he's got at least two. At least that two. Is, that's that third. third. Yeah, I wasn't surprised that, that he had his third at this point. So just into the game in this second quarter, and he's earned three fouls so far, giving Mason Woodall the opportunity to go to the foul line. Mason Woodall, up to this point, was a 100% free throw shooter. Also, I think it's interesting, Mason Woodall is leading the league in assists at 6.3 a game, just over the middle t- the Miami Valley. He's going to be called for a lane violation there as he steps over before the ball hit the rim. Yeah, he runs that offense, you know, so it doesn't surprise him. He's a very good, like you said last Saturday, he had an older brother who played for Dayton Christian, very intelligent player, knows exactly where to put his, you know, quarterback in the offense necessarily. Yeah. The shot by Wallace. That's good. 33-23. Now it's a 10-point deficit for the Eagles as they set their defense. And that 3-2 underneath to Girdwood. Good find. Good bucket. 35-23. You know, as we were just talking there, you know, what all finding the openings. And it's going to be a quick loose ball foul as the turnover started to happen. Number two. For Middletown Christian, that's Manus. Manus, the senior, calls the foul, which because they're in the bonus, they're going to go to the line. No, I'm sorry. I thought they were in the bonus. They must be in the bonus because they're, they're going shooting. to the line a three-quarter of a way down the down the court foul. So Have it to a Saturday unless uh, they forgot to put it on the scoreboard. Yeah. 47 seconds left. Edgerton misses the first of two. He takes the second shot. That one goes in. 36-23. Edgerton almost with the steal as he as it's going out of bounds off the hands of number 33, Jacob Wesco, but the ball will stay in the possession of the Eagles. Shepard causes the turnover. Girdwood. Out in front of everybody, stops, misses that, but but Shepard gets the rebound. Underneath, number 22 will be called for the foul, sending Shepard back to the line. That's David Matthew, the freshman. So you, uh, multiple freshmen are seeing playing time and considerable playing time this game. Yeah, you know, I was looking at that before the game. You know, Milltown Christian has some younger guys just as long, just as well with Dayton Christian. You know, which is good for the program. You know, you got them seasoned guys when they get, you know, junior, senior. Slavens, the freshman, right on cue, comes back into the game for the Dayton Warriors. Shepard, three bounces, four and five. Spins, release, doesn't get the roll, and the rebound by Wallace. Gets it out to Rose, back to Wallace. So kind of their their trifecta, if you will, Wallace, Rose, and Mahon mm-hmm. needs to keep the ball in their hands the whole time. A long three and good. That's David Matthew, the freshman, with a three-pointer after he calls the foul on this end. Puts a long bucket in the turnover. Last second, desperation shot, 36-26 is going to be your halftime score, a 10-point deficit for the Eagles. So let's just take a 30-second reflection and tell me what the coaches are going to be saying to their teams when they get into the locker room. Start with Middletown Christian Coach Mason. I think he's going to talk to his teammates and, or talk to his players and talk about, you know, the turnovers, you know, and the passes and making sure we're making right passes, we're doing the bounce pass. We're finding the open guy. You know, for Coach James, I think one of his thing is, you know, is going to be boxing out the offensive rebounds that uh, Middletown Christian has been able to get uh, and those second-chance opportunity points um, to go with that. And then also I think Coach Mason is going to talk about, you know, getting back in transition because Dayton Christian has got, you know, the 36, probably 25 of their 36 points have been off transition uh, points. Yeah, and and unfortunately, the turnover bug's been hitting pretty hard in in Middletown Christian, and I'm honestly surprised that maybe the conversion rate isn't any higher. Uh, 36-26 is a good lead, a 10-point lead, but with the turnovers that Middletown Christian has allowed, uh, it it could potentially be a lot worse. So uh, if you're Coach James, what's your thoughts on on what, what may be being said in the Warrior locker room? 
you know what he's probably talking to his teammates about is keeping the energy up they are playing with great energy they're 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 coming out with their intensity they're finding the open player down at the bottom of that three two you know keeping with the offensive movement but on defense you know just making sure that we're boxing out we're making sure everybody's accounted for making sure we're jumping to the next pass because a lot of those threes that middletown christian has got has been the opposite corner of that uh you know two two one uh, zone or you no know, defense they run. I don't want to call it a zone, but just making sure we have an eye on the ball and the opposite player at all times. Excellent. So uh, with uh, 8.45 left in this halftime, we're going to let the cheerleaders have a moment on the court. We're also going to make sure that we bring you a couple sponsors before we get started again. And remember the question of the game, you can e- or you can text 513-655-7438. Send us a shout out for maybe a player, a coach. Also make sure that the All right. Yeah, we're uh, we apologize that that something has happened with the lights here, so we're going to try to bring those back up as quick as possible. So I think we fixed it. So there you go. Um, all right. So we'll take a break in the action for just a moment, and we'll come back to you with a few things right before we get started in the second half.
We get started. We'll get started with play here in just a second. But with us, exciting times. We have Josh Wenhusen, the you. Middletown Christian Eagle that has now become a East uh, Eastern Kentucky Colonel. Yes, absolutely. So tell us what you think a little bit about what you're seeing out of the Middletown Christian Eagles, especially in comparison to maybe what you saw last year. Well, uh, we got a younger team, um, unexperienced, but. I think they're doing pretty good. I think the turnovers are what's killing us. But, um, yeah, I think the seniors are uh, leading the team the way they should. And, um, yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> that's all you got, huh? Okay, so um, as far as what do you think needs to happen in the second half in order to make up that 10-point deficit? Um, I think definitely a lot less turnovers. And um, I think um, maybe a little bit better shooting out of them, better defense getting up in the face of the opponent, um, yeah. And we saw that Coach Mason only took over on October 2nd. Mm -hmm. So what's the uh, vibe around the team as far as what they think of him? Have you talked to any of the players? Have you had any conversations with them? No, I haven't really had any conversation with the coach, um, players about the coaches, but I think they're doing a pretty good job. Um, the MCS over the past, like, four years has had trouble with keeping a coach for a long time. Gotcha. And I think that's kind of affected um, – the team's uh, winning percentage, but hopefully these coaches will stay for a while. Yeah, hopefully so, they need they want to build a program, build a culture. You got to stay there in order to do it. So right. those that are watching from Middletown Christian know your name, know you for your golfing prowess as well as basketball. Tell us a little bit about what you've been doing since graduation. Well, I uh, during the summer I worked at Shaker and Golf Club, and now I'm a freshman at Eastern Kentucky University. I am getting a marketing degree with a professional golf management concentration. So I've been doing a bunch of golfing. Uh, over break, I've been playing basketball and working out. and So it's been, a, it's been a blast. So you're trying to tell me in order to go to school, you have to play golf. Yeah. It's mandated. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm sure people would hate that, right? Yeah. Exactly. So what's the goal? What's the end goal? Where do you want to find and end up after college is over? Um, I would like to end up becoming a, uh, I don't, uh, like a swing, a swing coach, a, a professional. Um, I'd like to be able to teach, honestly, younger kids about the game of golf. Um, 
I enjoy little kids sometimes. <laughs> sometimes they're annoying. <laughs> is there a possibility that you would ever coach? Um, yeah, I could see that. I would like to maybe become like a high school uh, golf coach. I think that'd be fun. I think you do a fantastic job. So, Josh, we appreciate you taking the time. Yes. Appreciate your uh, expertise here in the uh, game of basketball. <laughs> and wish you nothing but luck in your golfing uh, extravaganzas in the future. All right. Thank you. Thank you, brother. We appreciate it. Yes, we should. All right, we thank everybody for sticking with us through halftime. 36-26 is your score right now as it's been a little bit of a turnover battle here in the start of the third quarter, 622 left. 36-26, as we said, one foul already committed by Middletown Christian. They're coming out in a little bit different defense. It looks like more of a 2-3 matchup. I think that's something that Coach Mason noticed there, getting extra help down below. <coughs> Edgerton with the shot. Misses, but gets his own rebound. He goes up. The block by Rose. I'd say he's had a few of those blocks this evening as well as Wallace. The shot. The rebound by Girdwood. Gets it out to Slavens. Slavens stops. Reverses. Tries to get the defense off of him by Wallace. Gets it to Edgerton, who then goes to Mason Woodall. So I think you've got to reset your offense just a little bit. Instead of the 3-2, you're seeing the 2-3 with the extension there by the freshman, which is Matthew. Yeah, I think that's something Coach Mason, like I said, noticed. Hey, a lot of their points, Dayton Christians was down below, not having that extra man uh, down there to help with. Girdwood's going to be called for the foul. He's going to take a seat on the bench, and Caden Shepard comes back into the game. Middletown Christian with a drive by Wallace. He puts his head down, but he's going to walk a couple extra steps there as he entered into the lane. Yeah, you know, I was looking at the halftime stats there. Wallace is actually leading scoring for Middletown Christian. He's um, had, it looks like, 14 um, of their points. Um, he's had a good first half and hopes to carry it into the second. The shot by Shepard is good from the outside, so that's going to be a three-point basket, 36-26. 4.47, that's going to be 39-26. I thought a little slow uh, response by the score, but that's okay. Now we're at 39-26, a 13-point deficit is what the Middletown Christian Eagles are looking at. A quick shot that falls off to the left-hand side and goes out of bounds off of the hands of Mason Woodall, so it'll stay underneath here for the Eagles. Dabble to Slavens. Slavens up and in for two, 41-26. Yeah, Dayton Christian's getting out quicker than they did the first half, so I think that's something Coach James wanted to keep going. The shot left-hand side is going to be good. He finishes strong, does Rose, and that'll give him an opportunity to go to the foul line for the and one. Rose getting to the top of the key. One thing, you know, um, Shepard just trying to go up for the block. You know, so many times... Pump fake is always a good thing, but Rose there finishing nice and strong. We apologize for any technical difficulties. We're doing the best we can to try to align the sound with the uh, picture, uh, but we have new software. We have a, an internet-based camera. We're, we're, we've got a lot of factors going on, so we appreciate you sticking with us. Appreciate those that have decided to kind of work through the details and stay here with this game. It's been a great one so far. 41-29 is your score. Middletown Christian trying to claw back into this game, uh, currently down by 12 points. You know, also in some other halftime stats um, to go over just so some people can know, you know, one thing that I think Middletown Christian also has to watch out for is Miller. You know, Miller, their point guard's got three fouls. I think that's why we didn't see him, you know, come off the bench. And for Dayton Christian, Shepard is their leading scorer. Uh, like I said, he's uh, been having a great range down there on the short jump shots, and I think he's – that's where he's kind of feeling it tonight, and that's one thing that I think also goes with it is that, you know, Middletown Christian has to adjust with that, you know, having that drop down that third person down there because, unfortunately, 
for Middletown Christian. Dayton Christian has got a lot of their points from in the paint. Yeah, and and as you mentioned, as we went out of halftime and back in, that uh, transition points and turnovers are definitely what's helping lead the Dayton Christian Warriors to a 12-point advantage at this third period mark with 4-12 left. You know, Middletown Christian's coaches are going to keep coaching hard the whole time. Just at, in that last timeout, he's in the ear of his player saying, hey, here's what we got to do to get back into this game. I want to see it out of you immediately. And back into the game for Middletown Christian, number 33, is Jacob Wesco. Underneath to Shepard, kicks it out to Slavens. Slavens gets it to Woodall, but then gets it to Shepard as well. It's going to be called. He's going to be called for the quick loose ball foul. Is Shepard? Looks like Middletown Christian may have moved back to that three-two that they were at when they started the game. Two fouls for Caden Shepard so far. Finding the open man. Going to call that a charge, actually, and unfortunately going down on the ground is I believe that's Wallace grabs his head. Unfortunately, I think he actually landed on the feet of Shepard. So we're going to get everybody off to the sideline. We hope that young man is okay. We'll send a quick prayer up for him. But as we're kind of talking and thinking, uh, as we're trying to get him uh, assessed and see where he's at, Tyler, obviously, they can't lose Wallace. No, Wallace, like I was mentioning, you know, the first half stats, he's leading scorer. You know, I think he's that momentum guy along with Mayhem that keeps this train going. You know, he, he was hot from the corner. Uh, him with Rose, I think, um, is a good tag team. You know, they get down below. Uh, it's hard to stop. But I, unfortunately, like you said, you know, he landed on top of Shepard there, and I think that might have been an ankle that he rolled, praying that he, you know, gets up and be able to walk out on his own power. Yeah, hopefully he's going to be able to – Take a moment and then finish this game. I think he came off and he is putting weight on that, so I think he'll maybe be able to get into this game hopefully pretty soon. Uh, definitely went down hard on another person's foot, I believe. So well, hopefully that young man is okay and we'll get him back into the game quickly. So if you're a coach, Mason, you got to make a transition. You got to make a change right now. You got to get somebody in the game that can uh, keep the ball rolling as you have been already in this second half with a couple points already on the board. And they bring into the game number 10, Liam Likens. You know, I liked a lot of things I seen out of Likens when he was in, in the first quarter, second quarter. He uh, He's very intelligent. He knows where to go. You know, he's a hard player. Not Maybe not as flashy, but he gives everything on the court. Yeah, trying to work underneath was Likens, and he's in the bottom of that 2-3 at this point. So we'll see if they can take advantage of the Warriors. Dabble with a three-point shot. No good. And the rebound is Rose. So if you're Rose, you've got to take a, a mental step and say, hey, it's got to be me right now. Likens underneath kicks it back out to the freshman. That's Matthew. Matthew trying to find Rose, and he does. A couple hard dribbles. He kicks it out. Finds the open shooter for three. Mason Gross, the freshman, scoring a three-pointer for the Middletown Christian Eagles. Slavens gets the hard pass from Kane Shepard. It's back to Shepard. He takes a quick three. And that's off the side of the rim and another rebound by Rose. Yeah, like you were saying there, I think Rose has got to take a step back and just say, hey, i got to put this one uh, on my back and help my team while Wallace is out. Rose, the freshman, dribbling, trying to find an open man, and he does, but out of the hands of number 33, Jacob Wesco, that's going to be a turnover for the Eagles. Good look, good look there by Gross. You know, uh, he was down there below. It just got a little high on 41-32 is your score with 2.38 left in the third period. The ball gets turned over to Mason Woodall so he can run the offense from the top of the key. Kicks that out to Slavens. Slavens back to Woodall. The quick shot by Dabble from the side, and that's in and out. And unfortunately, it looks like uh, those shots that were falling in the first half just simply are not falling for the Warriors. Yeah, a lot of those shots that Shepard hit, you know, from those same areas were falling down. Now they're not. Ooh. Likens almost makes the long pass worth it with a two-point bucket, but the rebound's going to go to the Warriors. Woodall tries to get the ball in underneath to Slavens, but the ball's kicked by the Eagles, and it'll go out of bounds underneath to Woodall. Good effort there by Likens with the one hand. I thought that was coming out of bounds. I think the cheerleaders did, too. Dabble tries to bully his way underneath. 
Doesn't find an opening. Kicks the ball out to Slavens. Slavens being uh, defended by Wesco. Shepard calls Wood out and says, hey, let's run some offense here. Edgerton from way deep, way deep. That is a low percentage shot for any shooter other than Seth Curry. Seth Curry. Slavens, he falls it off the back of the rim as well. And I think Middletown Christian's doing a good job of boxing out. They've got a lot of rebounds. They're going to call an offensive foul on the Eagles. That's going to be on number 33. That's Wesco. That's his second foul. Three team fouls to three team fouls by the Warriors in the second half. You know, one thing when I was playing, give, get taking a charge is a big momentum shift. It's yeah. kind of like an interception or a fumble recovery in football, being able to set. But it's also not a foul you see a lot of this uh, in basketball these days. You know, they, they don't sit there and take it. But uh, Slavin's did there. Woodall is willing to dribble out some time at the top of the key with a nine-point lead. Defense now comes on him. That's Gross, the freshman. Dabbled with good defense of Rose on him. Gets it out to Slavens. Doesn't take the open shot. Decides to go ahead and kick it back out to Woodall. Again, they're okay with just eating up time at this point with a nine-point lead here in the second half. 52 seconds left in the third quarter. Shepard underneath tries to drive off the left-hand side with his left hand. He misses. Edgerton has the fa- has the rebound, but a foul is called by the ref underneath, and that's going to be a fourth foul, Middletown Christian. That one's going against number 10, which is Likens. That's his first, but the team's fourth. Whittall directing the offense to Slavens for three. Off the side of the rim again. The iron being tough for the Dayton Warriors here in the second half. Gross, the freshman, running the offense from the top of the key. It goes off the knee of Edgerton. Yeah, Dayton Christian, I don't, I, unfortunately, I don't think has made one from behind the arc in the second or in the third quarter. Um, I don't know if they're, you know, hopefully Coach James, I think, is probably going to tell him, hey, slow it down. Let's get something down below like we were in the first half. I do not see Wallace and Likens with a quick two. That's what he does underneath. He kind of sneaks underneath there. He's gotten a few of those passes so far. Yeah, Likens is your uh, fly under the radar kind of guy. And uh, like I said, he he's given everything he's got. Shepard tries to drive his way in. He gets it to Slavin. Slavin stops it from going out of bounds, gets it to Dabble. Dabble with a nice pump fake, but he misses underneath. So the lid on the rim gets even tighter for the Dayton Christian Warriors. 41-34 is your score right now. We're going to see if Wallace is able to get back into this game, but he has actually exited it from the bench area. So he's getting checked out by the trainer in the trainer's room and hopefully we'll be back on the court as soon as possible for the Eagles. 41-34, we've mentioned it before. Where's Big Mo? Big Mo's kind of shifted its way over here to the Middletown Christian uh, Eagles. You know, as, as we said there, Dayton Christian only scoring five points in this third quarter. If I was them, I'd be going to look at the rim and be like, what is going on? Uh, but I think Coach James is going to calm them down. This was just kind of the same situation they were in Saturday night with Legacy. I think Legacy got a big momentum shift at the end of the third quarter and beginning of fourth. But Coach James got him calmed down. I think that's what he's going to do. But for Coach Mason, I think he's saying pedal the metal. Keep what you're doing. Let's go. So we do have a shout-out from my Floridian parents. Oh. So the shout-out to the announcer this time. We appreciate mom and dad checking in. So 41-34 is your score as we start this fourth quarter. As you mentioned, Coach James has got to get a little something in the ear of the Warriors because the lid is tight on the basket. They're going to have to win with a little bit of uh, grit and determination, and that's exactly what you've seen from Middletown Christian. You've got – the uh, leading score of the first half is out. Mm-hmm. You've got someone that has put in uh, the the fifth best total in the league in points so far in this short season, and you don't have him on the court. You've got your one main guy, and that's Rose. I haven't seen Mahon in the second half. He set that entire third quarter. Okay, and I, Wallace just came up and gave the thumbs up to Coach Mason and said, let's roll. Yeah, it looks like he got his ankle taped up there by the athletic trainer. I think he's ready to roll. And another person we didn't see was that uh, was Miller, was uh, Manny Miller the whole yeah. third quarter. 
As Coach Mason says, decided to go with the freshman to lead the defense and the offense at the top of the key. Edgerton, and honestly, Tyler, unless I'm mistaken, I, we haven't called Edgerton's name in the second half and maybe not even in the second quarter. No, we have not. Um, I think Middletown Christian has done a good job there of uh, kind of giving some attention there to Edgerton. Um, he hasn't been called. Shepard hasn't been either. So I think Middletown Christians has put a lot of pressure on him. Okay, as a, a put your player hat back on and the save by Wesco gets to Ross, who right now it just looks like there's a little out hustling going on by Middletown Christian. The shot falls off the front of the rim, and that's Slavens. Again, put your player hat. Shepard finishing with the left hand. Does it get to the point where when all your buddies are missing, you just think about missing yeah, I mean, it gets a mental thing for sure. When you see guys who are miss, making shots in the first quarter, um, you know, making those, and then in the third quarter, it's just like they can't even come close or everything's just not falling. It's a mental thing for sure. Um, but also at the same time, you got to have that positive mentality of saying, hey, look, let's just keep doing what we're doing. Eventually they got to fall. So the question will be, is the shot by Caden Shepard, the first one that's went in in a while for the Warriors, the momentum changer that they need? Likens with the defense on Slavens. He gets him trapped underneath, and Woodall drives, kicks it back out to Dabble. Dabble's going to shoot 4-3, and that's good. Quick timeout by Chip James, and as we go to this timeout, we'd like to thank another sponsor that does a great job for us, and that's McAfee Heating and Air. Mackie Fee Heating and Air is a huge sponsor. In fact, we call them a champion-level partner uh, for here at the Dayton Christian Athletic Department. Uh, Greg McAfee and his good team over at McAfee Heating and Air take care of uh, the Dayton area uh, and the surrounding areas as well, and they are a big supporter of Dayton Christian Athletics. We'd also like to thank our premier-level partners. That's TQL Foundation, Girdwood Orthodontics, Kettering Health and Kettering Sports Medicine, Flying Ace Express Car Wash, Indiana Wesleyan University, Cedarville University, and then that State Farm Insurance through Tim McKenzie as your agent is where you're going to save the most money. So we appreciate those uh, that have supported Dayton Christian Athletics. If you'd like to let us know what that favorite uh, Christmas present was when you were a child, you can text us at 513-655-7438 and see if you can uh, give some memories to those that are watching and viewing uh, and remembering those fun times when you unwrapped the Christmas presents and it was exactly what you wanted. 46-34 is your scores. We're back to the action in 6:31 left in the fourth quarter. Eagle faithful on the left side. Warrior faithful on the right side. Coach, Coach Mason going with the freshman still. Uh, keeping him out on the court, running the offense and defense. You know, Mahon and Miller, unfortunately, you know, at times has been hit with a turnover bug. So I think he's saying, hey, I'll take my freshman as long as they're not turning the ball over. And it looked like a jump ball was caused there by Mason Woodall. The ball will stay with the Eagles. It looks like we also got, uh, you know, 44 Wallace back in. I think he's got that ankle wrapped up nice and tight. I think he wants to finish this game as strong as he started it. Good to see that. We don't want any young man hurt in the next game we went on we don't want any young lady hurt as well rose to wallace with shepherd on him mason with the switch but his hands were on him in the defense so that's going to be a foul on yeah that's number three that's mason wood on that's just his first chicken back into the game is girdwood number 11 you know, there with Wallace, you know, when you see players, you know, roll their ankle, get hurt, they're kind of timid to drive the lane, and Wallace is uh, shot, not shy to wear. Something tells me that's the main reason Mason Gross gets playing time. That's a three-pointer and a smooth-looking one at that. A turnover goes into the hands of Matthew. He gets it to Gross, who gets it to Wallace. The three... Off the front of the rim, two hands get on it. That's going to be Slavens. Gets it over to Mason Woodall. Good defense by Gross. Slavens gets it into the paint. He goes up. It's going to be on the floor, but a foul is called against the Eagles. Good boob it there. You know, Dayton Christian had the numbers. Uh, I believe uh, Rose there was getting back, uh, and Woodall finding the uh, open man. Edgerton checking back into the game. Woodall also checking back into the game. 
I'm sorry, Woodall checking out of the game. He's going to take a rest for just a second. Kane Shepard gets the inbound pass, makes one man miss and drives with his left hand and finishes. They needed that one. Yeah, very good drive. Uh, very good. You know, they were got caught by the open. Oh, we got a double dribble there by number 13. Gross with a double dribble is going to cause a turnover 48 37 and a timeout. By Coach Mason, he says, give me a full timeout so we can talk about it. And while we have this full timeout, we'd like to share with you the opportunities of a Christian education are at the t- fingertips, whether it's through Dayton Christian, Middletown Christian. You can use the Ed Choice Universal Voucher in order to defray some of the cost of going to a private Christian school. If you want to learn more about D.C., there is a QR code on the screen. There's also a QR code to help you learn about the Ed Choice Scholarship. We appreciate you for what you've done in your support of Dayton Christian Athletics. So you've got uh, 522 left, Tyler. You've got a timeout that says, hey, this is what we're going to do to finish this game out. We're only down right now by 11 points. We've kind of fluctuated between down by six, down by 11, down by six, down by 11. So another couple three-point shots by Gross or possibly Wallace puts you right back in this game. Yeah, for sure. I think Coach Mason from Middletown Christian is, um, you know, talking to his players about finishing at the rim. There's been a lot of missed opportunities uh, at going and attacking hard to the rim, but just making sure we're finishing those. And then on the defensive side, you know, boxing out. And then for Dayton Christian, it's just continually to stay in yourself, continue to stay in what you know. And Coach James is getting them calmed down to say, hey, look, guys, let's let's do what we do and let's just keep going. And, and you're going to have to fight through the missed shots. Mm-hmm. That's all there is to it. You're just going to have to keep pushing through. Just a quick update, two quick uh, Christmas presents. How about a Chatty Kathy doll? And how about a Cabbage Patch doll? Very popular. I know the second one. I don't know the first one. Chatty Kathy's, uh, you know, one that, that may be a few years back. <laughs> Shepard with the ball in his hands. Now, again, if you're Coach James, are you taking your foot off the pedal? Are you willing to just dribble this one out for five minutes if you can? Uh, possibly, you know. But, on, you know, with Middletown Christian, they have a quick spark. You know, they can get back in this game pretty quick if Dayton Christian decides to, you know, throw in the second or third gear. If you can keep the ball out of their hand, Shepard with the ball at the top of the key has defense all over him. They're going to call a timeout, does Chip James, in order to talk a little bit about, and it looks like he's put the stall on. Yeah, I think he did that for a reason and a purpose, to see what kind of defense uh, Middletown Christian was going to come out with and see what they're going to do. And since they didn't come out and attack, I think he's going to fall back. So we appreciate you guys sticking with us. Unfortunately, seeing a little bit of technical difficulty on the feed um, as you have an Internet-based camera as well as uh, a couple of the fun factors involved. Uh, We appreciate you kind of working through those with us and staying with us. Uh, We'll try to do the best job to clean those up before our second game, which is going to be the Lady Christian Warriors against Middletown Christian's uh, girls varsity team as well. So that'll come up within about 15 minutes of the end of this game, and we'll get that started staying on this same stream. So 48-37 is your score, 4-41 left. And because of the timeouts and a few extra fouls, it kind of feels like this fourth quarter is becoming a grind a little bit. Yeah, this fourth quarter is, you know, feeling like it's going to maybe last a little bit longer. You know, I think Middletown Christian and Dayton Christian is going to fall back and kind of play the waiting game. Ryan Slavens, he says, no, nah, we're not going to wait. I'm going to shoot, and it's going to go off the side of the rim and into the hands of a Eagle defender. Wallace with no ill effects from his ankle injury earlier. Matthew drives, stops, gets it back to Wallace, finds Nate Rose underneath. Woodall closes defense quickly. He gets the rebound after the partial block. Good find there by Wallace. Dabble for three off the iron. And I can't imagine that they're field goal or three-point percentage in the second half is anything maybe above 20? Yeah, that'd be uh, being generous. No, Rose misses the quick putback. Shepard trying to find an opening and takes it himself up the side of the court. Makes one man miss. That's the freshman gross to Edgerton. He drives and on the floor foul by Middletown Christian, even though the finish was by Edgerton. 
Yeah, I think the, uh, the misses have caught both of these teams. You know, I think Middletown Christian's now catching some of that with the lid on the can. You know, they've had a couple opportunities down below to finish, uh, but just been able, not been able to. Coming out is Nathan Rose for a moment. I think he's played every minute of the game. I would think at this point, all, both freshmen seeing uh, plenty of time in the second half as well. Likens back into the game. Shepard with a quick shot, and even that one goes in and out. Coach James may try to, you know, do some work to those rims over the holiday break, maybe see what's going on. Yeah, I would say that's the second half, you're just, it's in their head at this point. Yeah. You know, there, there's nothing you can do about it. So with the stack set up for the inlet pass, Goes to Slavens on the outside. Somebody needs to be a spark, and it may be Shepard. He puts a two-pointer up, and that one goes off the back of the rim. If not for Middletown Christian. So there's going to be a quick adjustment in the time. The time did not start. You hear the ref saying you need to roll it off till 314. 48-37 is your score. Don't see that very often in basketball. Running the time down because of that. Matthew able to avoid the defense. Wallace driving. Goes off the side of the backboard. Woodall gets it to Edgerton. Edgerton tries to finish and he makes a bucket. The first time for him in a while. And the first time for the Warriors in a while. Yeah, they uh, broke the streak. Shot by Wesco. Hits in and out twice. Actually hits in and out twice yeah. before it doesn't fall. The foul 94 feet away from the basket is Likens. It's going to be on Dabbled, so he's going to take the ball out of bounds to get it to Mason Woodall. Quick 30-second timeout by Coach Mason. And I do want to give some credit to Coach Mason. I'm sure Coach James is the same, but we have... Uh, Coach Mason right here in front of us in close proximity. He is coaching to the last second. Yeah. I mean, he is giving everything you possibly can give in order to try to get this game um, as close with 242 left, 50-37. Uh, so if not for just a couple made uh, baskets here over the last minute or so by the Warriors, uh, the Eagles would be a lot closer because, honestly, the lid has been on the can, as you said, for the second half. Yeah, and, that, and that's a good leadership quality to have in Coach Mason. You know, it starts from the top. If he's coaching all the way to the end, his players are going to play all the way to the end. And uh, same with Coach James. He does it, too, no matter where they're at. Uh, if they're winning or losing, the, uh, the passion is still there. We appreciate you sticking with us again. We'll have a second game on the same stream, which is the ladies' varsity game. And as, as we said just a moment ago, it seems like this fourth quarter has kind of grind to a halt, and it's 2.42 left, but we're at 7.57 with the next game supposed to start here in just three minutes. So they'll have proper time to warm up. Full court press on, on by the Eagles, which you have to do at this point to try to get some turnovers. Edrington puts it up, but he's going to be fouled in the process. Yeah, and I think Middletown Christian, you know, uh, hopefully they're not getting frustrated, but I think they may be a little bit. You know, nothing's falling. You know, they're not getting the roles that they want. Um, so hopefully they can get back into this. Edgerton with the first of two down and in. Again, I, I would wonder, is this just a coaching decision out of Mason for Miller and Mahon, they haven't seen the court in the second half. He's got four fouls on Gross, number 13, who's leading the offense currently as the point guard. He gets the ball underneath to Wesco, up and in. He calls a quick timeout. It's a 30-second timeout, 52-39. So now you've at least broken down to 13. You're going to switch out Likens for the defense pressure underneath. Yeah, I think he's seen what he wanted to see there. Now he's ready to make that defensive adjustment to try to get his team, um, you know, back into this with two, about 220 left. And usually every coach has a couple presses. It can be a man-on-man -man press. It can be a diamond zone press. It can be a three-quarters or a half-court press. He may be switching up and saying, this didn't work. Let's try this other one now. Yeah, and, and be honest with you, we haven't seen a lot of press out of either team this, you know, this, this game. You know, that's not a lot that we've seen. Um, but I think maybe Coach Mason decides to put it on here. 52-39 is your score. 2.20 left with all the timeouts and the fouls. 
We're moving as fast as we can through this fourth quarter to get the ladies on the court. We'll get them playing after a proper warm-up time. So Caden Shepard's going to get the ball. He can run the length of the sideline here. Gets it to Mason Woodall. There is full court pressure. Kind of surveys the pressure. Gets it to Slavens. Slavens pulls it back. Gets it back to Woodall. Dabble with the ball back to Woodall. And he's okay with getting it underneath to Shepard. Shepard off the left-hand side. Gets his own rebound. Puts it back up and misses. Edgerton comes out of nowhere and gets the rebound. And he's going to be fouled, I believe, by Wallace. Yep, there, Dayton Christian able to crash the boards, get multiple opportunities. Um, and like you said, I think kind of how it's in their head, you know, very close, uh, makeable baskets that just aren't falling. A little bit of grit being showed by the Warriors because they are actually the team that has uh, less than two league-leading rebounders on the court, yep. and they're able to uh, take that last possession and get three rebounds in one trip. Edgerton making the second, 54-39 is your score as Gross comes with the ball leading the offense. Still in that 2-1-2, this time a turnover by Edgerton. Using the body, left-hand side. They're going to call that a charge. So as you said, taking a charge is a big deal. Could that be a shift enough? And Matthew gets back into the game, changing over from an offensive, um, defensive to an offensive player. Very good getting back on defense and, you know, taking the charge and being able to set your feet. That's such a hard thing to do, especially when you're running back at the same time as the your opposing player and setting those feet at the right exact time. 54-39 is your score. Gets to Matthew. He's trapped in the corner but gets it back out to Gross. Gross tries to stop. Get it underneath to Wesco. Wesco's fouled in the process, so he'll go to the line in the act of shooting. He'll get two. One thing we've seen, I think, is, you know, players being a little bit more aggressive and there's been a little bit more fouling called, you know, this this quarter. So I think that's another thing that's kind of went into the, you know, long quarter that we feel like we've had. Mason Woodall with his second foul. The foul shot by Wesco falls from inside to outside. He's going to miss the first one. He'll have a second one coming up. Makes the second, does Wesco, so 54-40. Full court press is still on. Haven't seen a turnover yet out of it, but he's definitely using it. Gets it over to Girdwood. Girdwood back to Shepard. Shepard drives, kicks it out to Slavens. And with 120 left, 118 left, it'd be smart to try to just get this ball to go around as quick as possible. Edgerton gets it out to Woodall. Woodall to Girdwood. Across court to Slavens. Inside to Shepard. He'll take one dribble drive, and he'll go up with his left hand. Yeah. Not not sure why that shot was needed, but, you know, Coach James will probably talk to him a little bit about that after the game. He's able to corral the rebound on the loose ball. He drives the length of the court, gets it to Mason Woodall, who kicks it out to Slavens. And I would say at this point, no shots should be going up, and Coach James is letting him know that from the sideline. Girdwood. Ball goes out of bounds, but it'll stay with the Warriors. Checking into the game is Matthew Dabble. And Shepard comes out of the game. If I'm not mistaken, that's probably purposeful. Yeah, I think Coach James just wants to, you know, sit him down and talk to him for a minute, you know. No need just to keep it out, just keep it going around. It's you know, in this game with the W. Yeah, I'm sure that the Middletown Christian faithful don't want to hear this, but they are a scrappy bunch. Oh, yeah. Two freshmen finish the entire second half. The lid gets put on for the Warriors in the second half. Matthew Dabble gets the ball over to Slavens. Only 10 seconds left. Play until the last second is Middletown Christian. But now they're going to say this one's over and let's move on. 54-40 is going to be your final score. So if there's such thing as an ugly win, this probably was it. Yeah, you know, it wasn't perfect on neither end. You know, Dayton Christian, uh, you know, there in the second half was you know, struggling to get good shots. 
Um, even on the good shots they had, the rim just wasn't working with them. Um, you know, turnovers a little bit too much in the second half. Middletown Christian, kind of the same way. You know, started out hot, but uh, unfortunately, just not too many buckets didn't fall for them. So if you're with us for the ladies' game, stay on the same stream. Uh, there may be an interruption in the broadcast for just a little bit. We are going to try maybe a tweak and a turn on some of these uh, uh, settings. So give us just a little bit for the warm-up of the ladies, then we'll come back on live, and we'll talk a little bit about the varsity ladies uh, basketball team. We'll have a video from Coach Bach, and then we'll be back to live action here as soon as possible. Thank you, and we'll be back to you in just a second. It is muted at the end. Uh, I also made it a really low um, quality on this one. Like,
All right, so. The layup is up. It's good. Layup is up. It's good. Layup is up. It's good. I five is given. I five is given. Coach Brock is walking over and shaking hands, shaking hands again. Is it okay if I use the restroom? Oh, yeah. Walk, walk inside of it. 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 Walk Rebound, pass, pass. Rebound, pass, pass, bounce pass, and the finish. Shot from the elbow. Other shot from the elbow is good. Pass to the elbow. The shot is good. Pass to the elbow. The shot is good. Pass to the elbow. The shot is off the mark. Pass to the elbow. That shot is good. Another shot from the elbow misses.
Okay, Adam makes his way to the scorer's table. His hand is going to the right and to the left and to the right and back to the left. Oh, yeah, yeah, I gotcha. Okay. So if he passed by number one, the rebound up and over, the bounce pass. The drive by number 11, she stops kick. Number 34 drives the bounce pass, goes out to the side. The quick shot is good. Number three passes it to number 25. 34 goes up and in. 25 with the drive, the pass. Number 11 with the shot. Number 11 with the rebound.
Check one, check one, and we're back now. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Just another little hiccup that we're getting through. Now we got the audio set, so that's a, a good thing. So, uh, Tyler, I hate to do this to you, but we'll repeat that in just a second after we have the Star Spangled Banner. Uh, honoring America in a prayer before uh, this uh, Christian event. So let's talk a little bit about the Middletown Christian Eagles. The ladies team right now is 2-0 and in the league. They have 64 points for and only 20 against in league play. They're 5-1 and overall with 54 points for and 29 against. So, uh, Tyler, I think one of the things we're going to see here in just a minute is a good defensive team because in both the league and non-league play, they're holding teams to under 30 points. Yeah, good good opportunity there, you know, to show off that defense tonight and hopefully do the same as they have been statistically. Where Dayton Christian is almost identical in points for a point against in league play, which they're 2-1 and one in league play. They're 4-3 and three overall, 42 points, 4 and, and 38 points against. So they're still on the right side of the ledger. But it is going to be a little bit closer. They're going to have to hold Dayton Christian. I'm sorry, hold Middletown Christian uh, to their lowest point total of the year so far. Starting for Middletown Christian will be Whitley Scherer, Jenny LaRue, Olivia Shorer, Ava Jordan, and Hannah Geis. All right, and the starters. So we've got a, an announciation here. It's Shower. Okay. So we've got Whitney Shower, Jenny LaRue, Olivia Shower, uh, Ava Jordan, and Hannah Guy starting for Middletown Christian for the Dane Christian Warriors. Craver, Miller, Sequest, Ferryman, and Clements will be your starters. 
Jumping for Dayton Christian will be Clemens. And she will be opposed by number 34. That's Hannah Geis. So it looks like we've got some uh, family members on this team, or at least cousins. Yeah. The win of the tip is by Middletown Christian. Number three, that's Whitney Shower. She kicks it out to what we're assuming is going to be a relation in some way. That's Whitney Shower. Sorry, that's Olivia Shower. The rebound goes back into the hands of Middletown Christian. Shower finds underneath number five. That's Jenny LaRue. The ball gets turned over out of bounds, and that'll go to the Dayton Christian Warriors. Really what we're seeing out of Middletown Christian is, is a, you know, pass and cut, pass and cut, motion offense, you know, and trying to cut Dayton Christian um, in one of those uh, cuts. Full court pressure. That's by Olivia Shower. Almost the turnover. Save, but it's going to go into the hands of Olivia Shower. She tries to make one man miss. Unfortunately, she doesn't. Clemens gets the ball and brings it back the other way. Driving, taking a slide. The ball goes into the hands of Craver. She kicks it over to Miller. Finds Craver back underneath. Surveying the defense is Miller. Getting it to Sequest. She drives all the way to the hoop, but a block by number 34 for the Eagles, and that's Geis. Yeah, definitely. Middletown Christian has, a, you know, a little bit of a height advantage here uh, against Dayton Christian, but Dayton Christian uh, doing that motion offense as well, trying to find the open uh, lady down below. Kelsey Toll is into the game for the Warriors. Sequest. Sorry, that was Ferryman. Another partial block. This time Shower takes it to the left-hand side of the lane. Puts it up, but it falls off the side of the rim. That is Sequest with the rebound. She gets it to Craver. Craver driving up. Misses just barely off the side of the iron. Shower again with the rebound this time. It's Whitney Shower. Foul on the outside is going to go against Sequist. That'll be her first, team's first. So 0-0 zero, zero score, 6.07 left in the first quarter. Everybody, I think uh, you had mentioned this before in the last game, Tyler, just kind of feeling themselves out here in this first half. Yeah, to just kind of see what they're going to handle here with. You know, they both have been aggressive. And, you know, the shower uh, sisters, cousins, whatever they may be, um, definitely are uh, come to play. They have a unique playing style, as I can see, in this first quarter. A shot falls off the rim in the hands of a Dayton Christian warrior. That's number 12, Ferryman. Ferryman goes the length of the court. Toll this time is going to tie up the ball. It's going to stay with Dayton Christian. So if you are familiar with the ladies varsity basketball, the Metro Buckeye League, you'll know that at near the top of that Scoring leader is Hannah Geis, averaging 17 points a game. The takeaway by Ava Jordan. She goes and stops at the block, and that's going to be the first two points of the game, and that'll be number three, Whitney Shower, with the score. Yeah, like you said, I mean, the Shower, she's up there scoring points. So that's one thing Dayton Christian's got to be focused on is trying to slow her down. Whitney Shower is also your third leading scorer in the league. So they have number two and number three. Toll gets the ball stolen from her by number five. That's Jenny LaRue. Out of bounds goes the foot of the Eagle player, and that's Olivia Shower. Jenny LaRue is fourth in the league in assists with 3.2. Then you have both Hannah Geis and Jillian Geis. High in that free throw percentage, taking those close shots. I'm sure the height advantage is beneficial in that case. The shot, three-pointer, in and out. Carver with the rebound to Clemens. Clemens finishes good. Very good job there by Miller looking up to find Clemens on the outlet pass. 
A little bit of pressure by Dayton Christian. The stop, the pop off the back of the iron and a hard rebound by Clemens who clears the ball. As Ferryman kicks it out to Miller, blocked. Ball goes into the hand and back into the hand of Geis. Toll trying to create some defensive struggle here for the Eagles, and she does. Underneath goes Geis around Clemens, and that's going to be 4-2, a two-point lead for the Eagles. I feel like there's a lot of, you know, like you said, a lot of last names, similar family connection. They have that connection already of knowing where they're going to be at before they're even there. Two-point attempt by Clemens, and that's good. That looked good from when, she, when it left her oh, hand. Yeah. Checking into the game is number 12, and without even looking, I'm going to assume that's a guys, and I'm correct, Jillian guys. They look a little bit alike. Hmm. Guys gets the ball in the middle of the lane as they've got full, port, full court pressure on them from the Dayton Christian Warriors. Winnie Shower trying to get the ball underneath to Hannah Geis, and she does. The foul committed, I believe, by Miller. I think that's one of Coach Hayes' points is to get the ball down low to uh, number 34, Hannah Geis, and let her kind of just make her home down there. Uh, she definitely, she's taller. Uh, she has the size advantage to be able to take it to the rim. I think they might have called that on Craver, but we'll try to get that uh, corrected for you. Actually, no, 25, they did call that on Miller. So Miller with her first, the team second. 5-4 with a one-point lead to go the Eagles as Sequest comes back into the game. You know, one thing I think Dayton Christian has the advantage of is definitely the depth on their bench. They have a lot of uh, ladies there. Uh, Middletown Christian, I believe, has three sitting down. So maybe that's one thing Dayton Christian can get that deep into their bench. If this is a full-court pressure affair, nice find by Sequest and the finish by Ferryman. That's why she is in the leading scores box on the Metro Buckeye stat page. Clemens with the attempted steal gets it to Geis underneath. Now, if you're going to run a full court press, you may allow Geis to have some easy buckets underneath if there's no defense. Yeah, you got to make sure you're getting back, and that's one thing that Dayton Christian's got to make sure they're doing. Up and in, that's Ventura, the freshman. And that ball is going to sail over the head of the younger guys, and that's going to be a turnover for Dayton or for Middletown Christian. The coach Hayes there giving his girls the you know calm down, settle down kind of uh, feel. They're getting ahead of themselves. He wants to get them back, uh, check back out. Ferryman to Clemens at the elbow. She turns and goes towards the basket, tries to get her own rebound. The ball runs around into the hands of. Jenny LaRue, and as Clemens tries to regain possession, it's going to be a jump ball in the hands of Middletown Christian. Out of bounds will be number three, Whitney Shower. An attempted turnover by Dayton Christian, but it'll stay on that side of the court with Middletown Christian. Middletown Christian, uh, everybody's kind of chasing legacy when it comes to the league stats, especially in wins. Right now, Legacy Academy has four wins in the league. They're 8-1 and one overall. A little surprising that they played nine games already. Know, yeah, That's, that a is, That's a lot of games. Middletown, Middletown Christian's number two in the league. Um, they have a 2-0 and record and a 5-1 and uh, overall record. Now, Legacy has not played Middletown Christian yet. That's coming up here on the 16th of January and then again on February 1st. So those are going to be a couple of nice games. Shower tries to get the floater to go in. It goes out of bounds and last touch by Middletown Christian. Um, common opponents, obviously, Emmanuel Christian, Miami Valley School. There's going to be a timeout for... The Middletown Christian Eagles, a 30-second timeout. And while we have this 30-second 30, 30 timeout, we're going to ask you to appreciate our sponsors as we do. And the premier sponsor for this event, this triple header that you've seen two out of the last three, is TQL Foundation. TQL Foundation 
is a great partner with Dayton Christian Athletics, the premier sponsor of this event, and a game day sponsor exclusively for Dayton Christian Athletics. Thanks to TQL for being today's sponsor, and not only uh, today, but many times sponsoring uh, athletic events and student athletes. We appreciate their support, and they say, go Warriors. So what's coach telling them in the in the uh, huddle right there, Tyler? Yeah, I think Coach Hayes for Middletown Christian is telling his girls to calm down. They've had a lot of, you know, kind of thrown up shots, um, settled down in their offense. I think Coach Bach for Dayton Christian uh, is telling his girls to keep their eyes up. You know, there's been a couple times where there's been some open ladies down below that they haven't seen, but I think the overall good performances on both sides. Very chased by Shower, but she's able to find the bottom of the net, and that's going to give Dayton Christian a 10-6 lead. Very good job, Middletown Christian, not stepping up, stopping ball. She went uh, north to south all the way. Coach Bach clapping up the effort of his girls right now as the turnover puts the hands back in the ball, or uh, the ball back in the hands of Dayton Christian. Ferryman with 148 left in the first quarter. Surveys the defense, gets it to Craver at the elbow. She tries to turn towards the basket. She stopped. A three-point attempt falls short. It'll go out of bounds. It'll go over to Middletown Christian. What I'm noticing by Dayton Christian, they run a little high, you know, get the ball to the high post, kind of weave right off the bat, and then the post player reads, you know, where these players are going to go and run off of that. I think the guard that gives it up is also streaking to the other side of the lane, possibly for a quick pass if a double team happens on the elbow. So Craver giving defense in the middle of the court. Shower turns the ball over to Sequest. Sequest brings the ball over the timeline. Gets the ball over to Ventura, the freshman. And that's going to be a turnover for Dayton Christian that will end up in the hands of Jenny LaRue. Then to the younger guys. Um, yep. And that will be the older guys. Hannah finishing that one off for a 10-8 lead of the Warriors. I would say Hannah Geis is probably up there in the league category of points scored and maybe some rebounds. I believe number two is where she rests right now. the game for Dayton Christians, number 25. That's Miller again. Miller's going to get that ball from out of bounds from Craver to Sequest. She drives, kicks it out to number 11. That's Toll. Craver for a three-point attempt off the side of the rim, and Geis with the rebound. She gets it out to Whitney or Jenny LaRue. Shower for three, and it's good. Very look, good-looking shot there by Shower. Uh, very good follow-through. Yeah, nice form on yeah. that. Kind of felt good, I'm sure, when it left her hand. Ventura tries to find an opening in the lane, kicks it out to Craver. Craver drives, gets fouled in the process. She's going to get two shots because it was in the act of shooting. You know, one thing I've noticed about Craver that I like, boy, she is not scared at all. No. She's going to go in that lane any time you give her just a crease. Yeah, she's she's being aggressive. She's seen the openings, and like you said, she's not shying away from taking it to the rim. We appreciate you joining us for this late-night contest at 8 o'clock start time with 3.09 left in the first period, 11-10. Now 11-11 is your score. So if you're Coach Bach right now, you're feeling pretty good with four seconds left basically in the first quarter. If you can end this one tied and possibly with a lead, with Craver's second foul shot. And it's good. And time will expire before a shot gets off for Middletown Christian. So there's got to be a little excitement on the Dayton Christian bench. Tell us what Coach Bach is telling his girls right now. He's uh, telling his girls he's uh, he's impressed. He's excited for what they're doing. You know, they've come out, they played, they've matched, you know, Middletown Christian. They haven't allowed, you know, guys to get in a rhythm yet, but they, they also have, uh, you know, capitalized on some of those turnovers that they've had. Uh, pushing the ball, you've got Fearman, who's went north to south a couple times uh, and finished to the lane. 
and I think he's just more excited about that. I think the energy level is definitely on the side of uh, Dayton Christian. I think in Middletown Christian, it's a Tuesday night. It's the week that you're getting out for Christmas break. You had to travel over here. You've already watched a boys game, and now you're thinking to yourself, ah, let's go out there, let's get a W real quick. And all of a sudden, Dayton Christian says, no, we're going to make it a little tough on you. You know, I remember when I was playing, these games were kind of like your trap games. When you had later games where the holiday break kind of games, you didn't come into it fully focused. You know, I'm Middletown Christian with school today. But these are those games where you got to come in, where you're out of routine, and just keep doing what you're doing and be focused on it. You know, when you look at the statistics, one thing that's going to stand out if you've been on the Metro the, the Metro Buckeye site is that the leading rebounder is Dayton Christian's Isabella Ferryman, which if you look at her height listed, it's 5'3". So how many leagues have a 5'3 guard that's leading them in rebounds? Uh, not many. It just shows her uh, test to her uh, work ethic and just kind of being aggressive and going after the ball when it's loose on the ground. She also has five steals a game, but she's followed quickly by Whitney Shower, who has 4.7. So Craver with the ball at the top of the key. Sequist, Ferryman, the steal by Jillian Geis. She wisely pulls it back out and gets the ball to LaRue, who finds Geis underneath. That's Hannah. Yep, they did nice rotation there. Geis following down to the lower block. Uh, Dayton Christian, unfortunately, was not able to jump that. Coach Bach may be seeing this already, but I don't know that you can leave Geis. I think somebody has to stay on Geis the whole time. Yeah, for sure. You cannot leave her just stranded down there below. That shower, but the turnover goes into the hands, and that's Ferryman. She's going to go the whole way of the court and up and in. Nice finish by the fresh by the uh, let's see by the senior guard. Yeah, she's showing her leadership. Looks like Dayton Christian now's got the full court press on. That's Toll and Ferryman and Craver at the top of that press, and the turnover goes into the hand of Toll back to Craver. She'll finish with the left hand on the foul, and it's not going to go down, but she'll go back to the line for two. Yeah, Carver, there's like you said, she's aggressive. She takes it to the hoop. Uh, as far as what we've seen, she's 100% from the free throw line, so let's hope she keeps that up. Jillian Geist looks at her coach and says, hey, I need a quick breather. Give me one. Then you've got Alyssa Geist coming in. So you've got Alyssa Geist, Jillian Geist, and Hannah Geist. All three of them on the court. So that's... uh. Like you said, maybe sisters, maybe cousins. Triplets. You never, Triplet, know. You never know, I guess. Uh, the ball goes in. So if it comes down to foul shots at the end of the game, give me Craver on the line. Oh, yeah, for sure. She's 100% four for four. 16-13 is your score. Nice defense. Ferryman causing some trouble. Toll grabs the loose ball. Misses the free th or misses the layup, but it's going to be a loose ball foul. Did they call that on Ferryman? I think they called a jump ball. Oh, a jump ball. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. This time going back to Larue. The turnover in the hands of Toll again. She's been causing problems on defense. She gets the ball to Craver. Craver's coming up the side of the court. She gets it to Clemens. Back to Craver. Ball gets slapped out of hand, but she recovers and gets it back into the hand of Clemens. Trying to pick up on this uh, offense here. It looks like it's a little bit of like almost like a Princeton stall just a little bit yeah. or a jump ball. So a jump ball call with Sequist coming back to the game. Bach has used his bench wisely keeping fresh bodies in so they can keep that full court press. Yeah, for sure. And that's, uh, you know, one thing that I think I've noticed here is that Middletown Christian, unfortunately, doesn't have the depth that Dayton Christian does. And uh, looks like now they called the jump ball just from Middletown Christian. Yep. Hmm. Nope. Actually, nope. they're going to keep it here to Dayton Christian. So that'll be Sequest taking the ball out of bounds. 
Ventura, the freshman for Dayton Christian, rejoins her team back on the court. To Clemens. Gets the ball to Ferryman with a cut. Clemens gets the ball back on the outside. A nice drive, but unfortunately loses the handles just a little bit. Ball end up in the hands of LaRue. Good drive there by Clemens. Just uh, unfortunately, Middletown Christian, you know, collapsed down on it. Got the ball out. Geist, the turn, misses it off the back of the iron. Sequest with the rebound. She's breaking into the open court. Geist to beat. She stops, pops it out to Ferryman, partially blocked. Geist with the rebound. She'll go from one Geist to the other, but the turnover goes into the hand of Sequist. Sequist kicks it out to Ferryman. She fakes, gets it into the hands of Toll. Toll's going to slow it down just a little bit as Geist comes out on her. So if they're willing to pull Geis out to that high arc, can you use that to your advantage? Yeah, for sure. You can keep her up there, whoever she's guarding, if they're switching. Uh, keep somebody, two people up there. Keep her out of the lane because she's out of the lane. You've got a free chance to get free points. Um, but I think Coach Hayes, you know, may look at that, kind of maybe back her off a little bit. But uh, for Coach Bach, he's got to keep her up on the free throw line. Yeah, if I'm Coach Bach, I'm going to put some sort of set in that allows Geist to get towards the end of that arc and the outside edge and then run some slip screen behind her or a backdoor cut in order to get her out of the lane. Yeah, just keep her anywhere from inside the lane because um, she has that height advantage. We appreciate those that have sponsored us and throughout the years, and one of those great sponsors is McAfee Heating and Air Conditioning. Join Greg McAfee and their team over at McAfee Heating and Air Conditioning for all your HVAC needs. He's the man with the plan. Premier Level Partners, we appreciate 2QL Foundation, Girdwood Orthodontics, Kettering Health, Kettering Sports Medicine, Flying Ace Express Car Wash, Indiana Wesleyan University, Cedarville University. And Tyler, if you need some State Farm Insurance, let me tell you who the guy is to go to. Who we got? Tim McKenzie. Good deal. Go see Tim McKenzie. See if you can get him some good pricing for insurance. 1613 Warriors scratching and clawing, staying with their three point lead right now with 450 left in the second quarter. If you're Coach Bach, you're telling, uh, hey, I like the effort. Let's keep turning the ball over against them and see if we can transition that into points. Or let me take a different approach. Is it better to get the turnover and then just try to eat some clock? Oh, I think maybe you chew, you get some more points here, and then you start chewing up the clock because you've seen that your defense has been able to shut Middletown Christian down, especially in this full court press. Yeah, they haven't handled the press quite well. There's Toll, who gets the ball out to Sequest, back to Ferryman. Oh, wants to try to finish but cannot because the ball comes out of her hand. Geis takes a hard fall down to the ground, and she's going to get up because she's tough like that. I think she may have got a knee to the uh, stomach there, and that's always no good. It takes the air out of your lungs a little bit. You had mentioned this before because the deeper bench is on the side of the Dayton Christian Warriors. Is this full court press something that they can keep up for a long period of time? Uh, could be if Coach Bach keeps his rotation uh, two or three every time. Boy, stopping Geis from getting the ball has to be priority number one, especially the rest of this quarter and into the second half. Yeah, one thing I've noticed from her, she finishes very well. Good give and go. Toll to Ferryman like they've been doing it for years. Clemens with the defense. Toll follows. They're going to call Toll with that foul. Here's what I like about Toll. She's like the Energizer Bunny. Keeps going. She's keep going. She's everywhere. I think they got her listed at 5-2, uh, but like you said, they keep her going. She keeps going, doesn't stop. I think that might be a generous 5-2. Maybe with some shoes on. There you go, with shoes. Yeah. We all know the basketball yeah, the height old, measurement's he, always gone by he, the shoes. He hold with shoes on height. Unfortunately, gets the ball into Hannah Geis, but this time she turns it over. Sequist stops, tries to get it to Clemens. It goes off the hands of Middletown Christian. Oh, not sure that one was uh, the way that they called it there. Unfortunately, Geist this time is going to have to go down. Ooh. So we hope that young lady is okay. She 
I believe, twisted her ankle and then immediately had to stop and go down. So we'll take yeah, we'll take that camera off her and gives her give her an opportunity. And while we're giving her an opportunity, we'd like to tell you about a Christian education opportunity, not only at Dayton Christian, but also at Middletown Christian, where you can use the Ed Choice Universal Voucher to help supplement the cost for a Christian education. If you'd like more information about that, just go to the top QR code, which talks about the Ed Choice Scholarship Voucher. Also, if you'd like to learn more about Dayton Christian, Go to the bottom QR code and we'll give you some information, take you directly to our website, our enrollment part, and uh, that'll give you some information about Dayton Christian. Come join us. We love the things that are going on here at Dayton Christian. We have great coaches, great teachers. I'm sure as Middletown Christian feels about their people as well. And one thing we want to say that we do not compete against other Christian entities. We're all here to expand the kingdom of Christ. So we want you to go to a Christian school, no matter if it's ours or anybody else's. But if you want to be a warrior, We'll talk to you about that, too. Come on over. Yep. Back to the action. They have Geis, and that is Alyssa Geis on the side. The Dayton Christian trainer with his assistant are working on her. Full court press still on. Three, that's Shower. Gets it to Shower. Back to Shower. Basically, if you just yell shower or guys, you, you've got a yeah. four-fifth chance that you're getting it right. Yeah, exactly. You get, you're just, you know, choosing in the dark. Hannah Geis tries to take a kind of a flying shot to her right outside of the lane and misses and goes out of bounds, but it's going to stay on the side of the Middletown Christian Eagles. Clemens at the top of the key against LaRue. Ball tries to get outside, and it does to shower. That's Olivia. A little bit of shake and bake. Stops and pops. Good. Very good shot there. You know, she got this pick there by her sister. Uh, I'm, oh, sorry. I'm assuming her sister. Um, and uh, hit that 12-footer. Ventura answers with the three. 21-17 is your score. Good answer there by Ventura, the freshman, uh, setting up and knocking down the triple. You're a Dayton Christian Warrior fan. You're believing in this pressure defense because right now it's giving turnover after turnover. Ferryman, ooh, just slips out of her hands. She slaps her hands together and saying, man, I missed an opportunity there. But excitement on that turnover and then return down to the other side of the court. Maybe a little sweat on the ball. Slid out. But good look there by uh, number 13 there, uh, Sequest. Not nearly as hot in the gym as it was last Saturday. No. So uh, I don't know that uh, humidity is playing too much of a part in this one as it might have been or cramps were caused by the heat that we had on Saturday. Apparently, we know a guy that was able to get the temperature down. Yes. Think. Yeah. Very thankful. Rebound by Clemens. That's going to be a over-the-back call, which is against number 13. That's Ava Jordan. That's her first, team second. Relatively clean game, quick game. We're 2.14 left in the second period as the clock kicks, ticks to 9.01. If you are interested in letting us know where you're watching this great contest from, feel free to text 513-655-7438. Again, 513-655. 655-7438. You can send a shout-out to a player, maybe a coach. Let us know where you are watching from as the Dayton Christian Warriors, with a two-point lead, bring the ball up past the timeline. That's Ferryman. She turns, tries to go inside. She's met with defense immediately. It goes to Ventura. Ventura trying to get her own rebound. It'll go off her hands and out of bounds. You know, previous there, uh, uh, possession there by number 11, uh, Olivia Shower finding, I believe, number five, uh, Jenny LaRue underneath for the, you know, long 30-foot pass. Very good finish. Jordan Miller checks back into the game, as does Craver. She makes an adjustment in the defense. That time a little faster. They break the press. Shower with a long three. 
And it's good. Very deep three. I think maybe Shower's starting to get in the zone a little bit. Are you trying to say it's a hot shower? <laughs> <laughs> the shot by Ferryman off the side, but she gets her own rebound and gets her rebound off the rebound to Miller. One minute left in the second period. Clemens able to go by the defender, number 11. That's Olivia Shower and scores the two-point bucket, giving Dayton Christian a one-point lead. Cole causing problems on defense, as she normally does. Clemens with a long rebound. I think the student section may have uh, tricked the, her up there, counting down, and I think she may have heard that. Oh, Clemens! The bank is open. Three for Clemens. I didn't think banks were open this late, but it is tonight. <laughs> Nine points for Clemens. No answer from, Dayton, from Middletown Christian. Ferryman gets the foul for her. That's going to be on number three, Whitney Shower. That's her first, team's third. Sequist comes in for Clemens after that long May three. Give her a little breather here uh, after that big big basket. Again, we appreciate all that have joined us this evening. If you'd like to let us know where you're watching from, 513-655-7438. Send a shout-out to one of these ladies in Craver with a three off the back of the iron. That will be the last shot attempt and rebound for the Dayton Christian Warriors in this first half, 26-22. If you're the Warrior fans, why are you excited after that first half of play? You're excited because you've seen your team come out and they're ready to roll and they've played. You know, they, they've capitalized off some of the mistakes by the Middletown Christian Eagles uh, and they've come out and they've capitalized and they've played defense very well and very good in transition tonight. I think Coach Box saying, let's keep it up, keep the pedal down. Uh, you may see him, you know, maybe lay off a little bit if they get a bigger lead here, but uh, I don't presume so. I'm thinking that pedal to the metal until you can create some distance. So let's give you a first first half uh, points. We're led by Sydney Clemens with nine points and Isabella Ferryman with eight. Uh, Ventura put in five and also four by Craver. And we have a shout out. We have a shout out to Sydney Clemens and watching from Arizona from Taco. So, Taco's giving us a shout-out all the way go. from Arizona. We appreciate it, Taco. Tell a friend. Let them know that they can text in 513-655-7438. Let us know where you're watching from. Send a shout-out to one of these players. Send a shout-out to a coach. Make sure that you know that – make sure they know that you appreciate their efforts on the court and the efforts that they put in each and every day in the classroom. So, we appreciate your time, and thank you for joining us. We're going to take a quick break. As we go into halftime, come back with some more stats and some talk about the next half of exciting play. Right now, the Dayton Christian Warriors up by four, 26-22. Glad to have Coach Bach here with us. Uh, we appreciate you taking some time today. So uh, tell us a little bit about the journey to become the head coach of the Dayton Christian Girls Warriors. So uh, last five seasons I spent at Kettering Fairmont there as the varsity assistant coach. Always wanted to be a head coach. And so the, the coach there knew that and was preparing me and preparing me for, you know, one day the role that I would like to have. And Dayton Christian was kind of a role that suits me personally and, you know, with the basketball I think we have a lot of potential here at the school and with the brand new Warrior Center it's not very old and I have the opportunity to pour into not only the girls basketball team but other students um, with their faith. Awesome and you would consider yourself a man of faith. Yes sir. Awesome yes, so sir. tell us a little bit about your Christian journey as well. Yeah so my wife and I attend Rivers Crossing Church in Mason Ohio across from Kings Island and we serve there she's actually on staff there in uh, their kids ministry and also the disability ministry and I serve in that area as well. So <clears throat> that's where we call it, that's our church home and 
that's where we pour into. Awesome. So uh, for our viewers and, and those that don't know you from your Kettering days, uh, tell us a little bit about your offensive philosophy. Are you more of a, I want to take the ball and grind out wins? Are we going to run and, and transition? What, do you, what are we going to see when we look at the offensive side of the ball? Hopefully what we'll show uh, our philosophy is try to speed up as much as we can, try to get a lot of possessions, push the pace, try to wear out the other team both offensively and defensively. Awesome. And your defensive mantra is, if you were to say, I can sum up our defensive mantra in one phrase, it would be? Grit. Grit. Awesome. We want to be in the gaps, make it very difficult for other teams to get into the lane and get shots. Awesome. So I know you've had a couple games already. Either talk to us a little bit about the experiences you've had so far, or maybe give us a little bit of the rest of the season preview of what you see this team becoming. Yeah, so we're pretty balanced in scoring. So we have about three girls who are around the 12 to 8 point range, a couple are in the 5-6, so any night can be anybody's game offensively, and so, you know, we look to mix that in with hard defensive pressure. Our point guard actually leads the league in rebounding at 5-2, so, you know, we have, we try to use that to our advantage because she can just get the ball then and push the pace and push tempo, so we'd like to mix that in and compete with, you know, the Legacies and Middletown Christians who've kind of been at the top of the league for a while. Awesome. So let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, when we think of rival teams for Dayton Christian, you're new to Dayton Christian. What did you hear immediately when it came to, well, we got to beat so-and-so? Yep. So it's got a legacy has always been the historic rival, and I think now it's kind of creeped in with Middletown Christian as well. Uh, my research shows that Dayton Christian had, you know, beat in Middletown Christian for a while, and last year Middletown Christian um, beat us twice mm. so we look to avenge those losses from last season and see if we can get back on the winning side also the rivalry and when parents um, give you a little recap of the season what is it that you hope they say and they saw in your team I hope they saw a team that works hard doesn't quit and that um, plays the game the right way and, and uses it as a vessel to honor Jesus and to bring you know maybe fellow players like hey that you know they played hard they played the right way and, you know, we'll let us use that as an opportunity to minister. Yeah, do everything in excellence, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks, Coach. We appreciate your time. Looking forward to the rest of the season, and good luck. Thank you.
All right, back with us. Second half action starts hot with Shower going to the rim. She's blocked. Craver with the rebound. Clemens. Sequest from the top of the key. That's a three-point basket made by Sequest. Good ball movements coming out of the half there for Dayton Christian. If you're Dayton Christian, you lived and died by the turnover, and Geis is unstoppable underneath. She's uh, got to get back and make sure you're accounted for her. All right, we got another shout-out. How about shout-out to all the Warriors, especially Yamaya Craver. Dayton commentators are doing good. We're getting a little love. Hey, there we go. We say thanks. Yeah. Oh, with a hot pass. Glad she caught that or the uh, that ref would have been, been, been yeah. concussed, maybe. Double dribble, yes, absolutely. That was headed right for his head, but snatched out of the uh, midair, uh, did shower. Let's see, both the showers are listed at 11, and they sure look alike. So I'm going to I'm gonna take a bold step and say that they're twins. Yeah, and uh, was the, what grade's the other? Or there's Geis. only two of those. Geis has got three. No, there's three Geises. Yeah, there's Jillian. only two showers. Oh, two, right? yeah, two showers. Yeah. Toll to Miller. Miller being guarded tightly. She makes a move to the basket. Tries to get her own rebound off the miss. Toll with defense. Full pressure. That's the only way Toll knows how to do it, right? It's full pressure, pedal to the metal. All the way. That's LaRue with the top of the key. Nice move by Shower. She's going to get hit by Toll on her way up. That's a basket plus one. You know, and as they come out of the half, I believe, is it Alyssa Geis? I think she may be done for the evening. Got some ice on her ankle, uh, yeah. praying that she uh, recovers quick. Uh, an ankle injury is never fun at uh, any level. Can be one of those that keeps seeing you over and over again. Mm -hmm. Shower from the foul line. That's good. That's Whitney Shower, the junior. Statistically, she has 11 points. Olivia has four. Whitney has 11 and Hannah Geis with 12. Another made basket, switching from the left hand to the right hand is Shower, starting to heat up just a little bit. I think Coach Hayes may have had a uh, come to Jesus talk yes. uh, with his girls. And we're allowed to say that because we're yeah. a Christian institution. Exactly. Absolutely. I won't offend anybody. Yeah, so Toll. Hit and knocked down as the players collide. 29-29 is your score now. From Dayton, Ohio, we're giving a shout-out to Yamaya Craver. Let's go and let's go, D.C. Now we're starting to get a few come through. We've got two for uh, Carver there. Yeah, Craver. Craver, sorry. Big love for Craver. Yep. Big love. And let me tell you, I, I got to meet her, talked to her many times. Funny young lady. She, she definitely puts a smile on people's faces. She gets the ball with a shot off the back of the iron and the rebound by Middletown Christian. Smart play by LaRue. She stays back to help with the offense based on the pressure defense that they're receiving from Dayton Christian. We'll see if the second half has a conditioning issue to it as well because Dayton Christian has done a good job. Coach Bach has done a good job rotating his players in where Middletown Christian just doesn't have a lot to spare. A double team underneath on the block. Geis gets it at the top of the key. A long three-pointer. That one's going to go out of bounds. Turnover for Middletown Christian. And especially since Alyssa Geis is now probably out for the rest of the game, it just takes it away. I think Middletown Christian now has two that they can, you know, rotate in and out. Uh, we'll see if that comes back to uh, hurt them. Yeah, Jillian Geis, and yet to be in the game yet, is Tolber. Tobler, sorry, Tobler. Ventura with a shot. Falls short. Clemens with the rebound. She gets it back outside to Toll. Toll puts it up. Ferryman with the rebound. Ventura again with the shot. That one goes off to the left-hand side. It'll go out of bounds and now back into the hands of Middletown Christian. 
you know, I mean, I know you mentioned Fearman being the top rebounder in the Metro League, um, even at her listed five three. Uh, she, uh, as I noticed there, she, her position on the uh, a defender is one of the reasons why I think she uh, is a outstanding rebounder. Yeah, always fronted. She's yep. always fronting. Shower surveys the defense. The switch to Sequest. LaRue finds Geis at the elbow. She wants to go in. It goes to LaRue, but good defense by Toll. Another stab by it for Ferryman. LaRue trying to find the open shower. Geis double teamed underneath. They are going to call a foul on Ferryman this time. So instead of a jump ball, they're calling it on Ferryman. Yeah. Um, aggressive, you know, going, trying to go in and get, uh, luckily, you know, that's a 50% call. Go either way, jump ball or get him on the wrist. And unfortunately that time, the ref seen it a different way. Defense gets set for Dayton Christian. The set gets run by Middletown Christian. Low block goes LaRue. Nice move. And she finishes with the right hand on the left-hand side of the rim. Little uh, uh, bait and switch there. Try to act like she was going back out and then seeing her defender jump it and turn right back around. Now the pressure defense getting put on by Middletown Christian. Sequist brings the ball down. Ball gets punched out, but Ventura's there for the pickup. There's Ventura driving the lane. It goes off to the right-hand side, and I'll tell you what, I liked what she saw there, and that was Geis pulled out to the wing, mm -hmm. and she said, I just need to beat one person, right? and I've got an open layup. You know, and that's that's that intelligence part on both teams that we've uh, seen, you know, both boys and girls. Um, you know, as what I noticed, too, you know, what we've seen in the boys' game is the second half, Dayton Christian, you know, unfortunately started to get that lid on the basket and i think the mm. girls are maybe hopefully not but from what we've seen it looks like they've come hard by their points in the third quarter i'm not going to speak that negativity on them i'm gonna I'm, I'm speak hope but i'll tell you what middletown christian doesn't have a lid on the basket that's for sure 33 29 is your score and the run right now is starting to feel like it's creeping up and up for middletown christian toll to clemens the open three Ferryman with that rebound that we talked about all game. She gets there and fronts people up and just is in the right place at the right time. Ventura working for the good shot. The block by Geis. She blocks it and then gets her own rebound basically off the block. Gets yep. it out to Shower. Shower calls out the offense. LaRue sets the pick at the top of the elbow. Switch. LaRue this time is met by Sequist in the block, but unfortunately she's going to travel by dragging that pivot foot. Yeah, it looks like Middletown Christian, you know, they're in Dayton Christian. Dayton Christian being able to set in their offense, and they need to start doing those cuts that they were doing in the first quarter They where the high post comes off and uh, Craver there, and she works off of that, and they haven't been doing that much, so maybe they can get back into doing that. Yeah, it feels a little rushed. It feels like they're they're either feeling the pressure of the defense, which Middletown Christian has done a good job playing defense in the second half. Ventura with a nice take. She gets her own rebound, goes back up, and unfortunately it's going to go off the side of the rim and a foul is going to be committed in that process of trying to get the rebound, and that foul is going to be on Merriman. I believe that's going to be her second and the team's third in the second half. Another shout-out says, let's go, D.C., let's go, Maya, play hard, girls, and win. So instead of uh, an, a, 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 an amen train, you know, sometimes on Instagram, somebody will say, I'm going to start an amen train, and you get, you know, 100 people or so, I think it's the Maya that's the Maya. In the, oh. Yeah, the Maya amen train has started where – We've got three or four, so keep bringing them in, 513-655-7438. And for, the, for those of you that are watching and listening, let us know where you're watching and listening from. Let us know if you want to send a shout-out to one of these ladies, one of the coaches, anybody, 513-655-7438. Ventura trying to find space on the offensive side, and she does. Gets the ball to Sequist, sets a pick. Sequist gets the ball outside uh, number 22. I don't think we had seen her yet. That's... Bella Varker, Vacker, Vacker. Another freshman in, you know, getting some getting some varsity minutes. 
Like you said, Coach Bach going deep into his bench, which is going to be a crucial thing here coming in the fourth quarter. And he mentioned that they're they're a little bit young at times, so even though they have a few seniors, there's some times that uh, they're going to be young on the court, and hopefully that's going to you know, relate to uh, success not only now but later on. Yeah, I think um, the one thing Coach Bach may, you know, want to talk to his ladies about, I think they come out and they were, you know, excited with what the first half brought, and I think they're just getting excited and getting the jitters, and I think they just need to settle down for this next, you know, nine minutes counting the fourth quarter. It's going to be a jump ball. Hands tied up by Toll. Ferryman back in the game. Miller back in the game. Checking out is Toll and Ventura. First time checking in is Tobler, Alea Tobler. Yeah, Coach Hayes giving his uh, girls, uh, who, who's he giving out here? We got LaRue, giving LaRue there a little bit of a breather. And I'm sorry, that looks like Ayana Tobler. Ayana. Fairman bringing the ball up, crosses the timeline. Craver goes down for just a second, regains her composure. Vicar, she gets fouled as she tries to drive the right side of the lane. Let's see if that's going to be on number one. That's going to be on Tobler. As she enters the game, she's picking up her first foul. Second foul for Middletown Christian and a timeout by Bach. He says, let's talk about it with 43 seconds left. And I think he knows the importance of this set on this out-of-bound play to give them a good shot potentially get him to within two points. Yeah, and I think he wants to finish the quarter this way so he can uh, get the momentum and the energy back on Dayton Christian's side of the court. Thirty-three twenty-nine is your score. 43.7 left in the third quarter, a quarter that has been dominated by Middletown Christian. Middletown Christian sets their defense against a stack offensive set for Dayton Christian. Outside to Sequist. She stops, resets her feet, gets the ball underneath. An up and under shot falls off the side of the rim, and the rebound goes to Middletown Christian. Yeah, not the set maybe Coach Bach wanted there, but get a stop here, maybe get a second chance at that quarter points in favor of Middletown Christian by 5 11 6 is your quarter Ooh. Olivia shower with the turnover just the break Dayton Christian needed maybe they can get a second opportunity to get within two or, or three 13, or one 13 points by shower 12 by Geis your leading scores for Dayton Christian Still Clemens at nine, followed by Ferryman at eight. A long shot, knowing the time is running out by Ferryman. So Ferryman puts up the last shot of the third quarter, 33-29, and you're starting to see a little bit of fatigue sitting in for both teams. Mm -hmm. You're starting to see a little bit of quicker shots. Um, what are you telling your players here as you get ready to start this fourth quarter? You know, uh, I mentioned it Saturday at the boys game. Now is where the intelligence of the sport and the game comes into play. When you're exhausted, when you're tired, when yep. you're starting to get sloppy, it's time to go back to the, 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 the IQ that you have for the game. It goes with any sport, football, basketball, tennis, baseball, anything that you can think of. And that's the important part for this next eight minutes is being smart, being uh you know, using our abilities to the best abilities for our team. Yeah, don't get away from who you are. And unfortunately, in the third quarter, I think they started throwing up some longer shots. Um, I, I would agree with you, Tyler. You know, why not go back to that uh, elbow set that they ran quite a few times, especially in the first quarter that seemed to work well. It allowed it, it allowed Craver to mm -hmm. kind of go to go there, and then uh, a guard would follow her maybe for a little give and go. So. Uh, see if that not only eats up a little bit of time, but get you back into some high percentage shots closer to the basket. 
Yeah, and I think um, getting Craver back involved in the offense, as we see in the first half, she's, she she wants to go to the basket. I think giving her the opportunity is what's going to spark this uh, Warrior team in this fourth quarter. We'll see if Coach Bach agrees with us and starts this fourth quarter in a different set than he has finished the third quarter in. So Middletown Christian gets the ball out, eventually puts the ball in the hands of LaRue. LaRue running the offense from the top of the key. That ball's going to go out of bounds, out of the hands of Middletown Christian and into the hands of the Dayton Christian Warriors. This could be the spark they need to start the sec or start the fourth quarter. I think Ferryman needs to get more, get involved, get back to what she was doing in the first and second quarter, just taking control of it. Graver is going to take the ball out of bounds this time. 33-29 is your score with 7.36 left in the fourth quarter. Ferryman, top of the key, setting the offense. Craver crosses the entire court, gets to the outside, looking for the open shot, doesn't feel it. Changes her position to the top of the key. Vakar, side of the rim, into the hands of Middletown Christian. You know, I think Carver, they're trying to get her open like we had talked about, and just uh, Middletown Christian playing a good, solid uh, set there. Sequest causing problems underneath, is able to make that shot not go in on the rebound. Good aggressive rebound there by Miller. A reach-in foul is going to be called against Geis. Nope, actually they're going to call that as a pushing foul on number 11, and that's Olivia Shower. It's going to be her second and the team's first of the second half. Very clean second half so far, zero fouls for the Warriors. Have just won that first one for the Eagles. So we got an out of bounds play there. Looks like uh, Geis uh, getting an out of bounds there. So the ball turned over to Middletown Christian. Geis running part of the offense from the top of the key. She slips out to the low block and then back outside to the elbow. Clemens with the turnover. Holding foul number 13. It's going to be Ava Jordan, one of the only people on the roster not named Geis or Shower. I remember when I was a uh, freshman year track, there was five Hodges on the team, and I was the only one not related to the rest of them. <laughs> maybe just somewhere down the family Somewhere, thing. maybe. Oh, there you go. Staying there, staying with it there, Clemens with the uh, bobble off the head and into the basket. So let's see what Coach Bach does. I think that timeout was planned. I think he said, get me within two, and now I want to reset my defense to a different look. Because as soon as Clemens made that, he got in the ref and, and, and gave it the T and said, hey, get, girls, come over here, and he's drawing something out right now. It'll be interesting to see how they come out a little bit different in this. Uh, Maybe they keep their full court pressure on like they did in the uh, first, second quarter. And, you know, they got a lot of turnovers off that. And maybe that's what he needs to go back to. Those of you that are watching uh, our live stream see the commercial for Girdwood Orthodontics. I have to admit I'm a little biased when it comes to orthodontic work because Dr. Girdwood did my loving daughter and did a great job. In fact, the reason that you can be happy, Tyler, with her smile right now it's is because, because of Dr. Girdwood. There we go. Middletown Christian runs into a trap, so you do see a, a little bit different look. It's almost like a half-court trap or a three-quarters trap. They're trying to get a turnover. Shower moves. Nice floater. Nice shot. Very nice ball movement there. Yeah, Dayton Christian has moved into a j trap first pass, you know, kind of trailing behind. Uh, Dayton and uh, uh, Middletown Christian is uh, responding well. 35-31, fourth period with 5.37 left. Craver kicks it out. 
Clemens this time tries to drive back in, sees Geis and pulls it back out. If you're Coach Bach, you're saying take your time, find the better shot. Geis tries to block Clemens off the side of the iron into the hands of Middletown Christian. That's Olivia Shower. She gets it to LaRue. Geis. Eventually into the hands of Whitney Shower, who's been the scoring machine in the second half. This time, number 11, Olivia Shower takes the long three. Whitney gets the rebound. She takes another shot, does Olivia. Ball's going to go out of bounds and back into the hands of Dayton Christian. Yeah, I think the, the sister there playing, you know, two on two, I think that's where that came out of, you know, backyard basketball. They were playing that give and go, pick and roll kind of thing. Um, and unfortunately, didn't go down for him. Dayton Christian needs to uh, really settle in here and find a shot. Fairman and Toll back into the game. So let's see if they can provide a spark offensively for Dayton Christian. Sequest rolls along the back of the rim. And is it just fatigue at this point, Tyler, that, you know, when, when these shots are missing by just that much, I mean, literally probably an inch and a half and that ball goes in. Yeah, you know, at the last, you know, I've noticed on both sides of the ball, the, the girls are just, you know, it looks like they're exhausted, you know, they're tired, you know, they're not crashing the boards as hard, Middletown and Dayton. I think that's where, like I said, the, the IQ needs to come in, just like right here with Fairman getting a steal. Fairman. Driving to the lane, she's going to get a foul on her, which will send her to the line for two. Looks like we had a substitution. Did we get that? Yeah. I believe Jillian Geis has also checked into the game for Middletown Christian. As you said, the bench is pretty thin for Middletown Christian, but they're doing a good job keeping everybody fresh. Shower, Shower, and LaRue, I believe, have been in the game the entire time. First shot by Ferryman is good. Fairman can, uh, you know, get us here within two. I think Dayton Christian maybe puts that full court press back on. There's another one. It's 35-33. As you said, full court press coming. Sequest, Ferryman to Toll. Toll pushing the defense out. Craver trying to get the ball. And it's going to be in Toll's hands, but it's going to be back into the hands of Middletown Christian as a quick turnaround of points. Hannah Geis is going to finish. And to the right-hand side of the rim for two. Dayton Christian coming out. Middletown Christian just taking advantage. You know, Hannah Geis within the block is just, I mean. Yeah, it's know, un it, she's just automatic. Yeah, near unstoppable. So not only is her height, but she finishes well. Craver with a great shot, but it's going to fall off the front and then the back of the rim. Middletown Christian trying to find the open Lane, she's going to be fouled by Toll as she follows her down the court. If you, if there's anything such as a good foul, that was one of them right there to be able to stop the momentum of the ball and try to get reset here and get your teammates back so that uh, you can prevent that bucket from, you know, going in and being up another two. The set underneath, looking for Geis. They find her. She makes one move, tries to get to the middle of the lane, but the foul's going to be called. Referees That's on Sequest. Referees are getting whistle happy. We've gotten a couple fouls here in the last cup, but uh, good solid on both sides of the ball. Does feel like they're calling it a little bit tighter in this second half. 3-3 three, three are your foul totals. Jillian Geis with the block by Sequest. Ball goes out of bounds. Nice play by number 13. Very good recovery there. Uh, looked like Geis had her sealed off, but Sequest came back and got the block. Defense in the middle is Toll. She makes the turnover happen. Sequest by herself. Tries to get the ball to Ferryman. That's what it feels like, just a little bit too quick with the passes, too quick with the movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're just not ready for it. You know, they're just getting ahead of themselves. Timeout by Coach Hayes. 
he wants to take just a second to talk about it. he's concerned about the ball just kind of flopping over everywhere so while we take just a minute we want to thank our sponsors and one of them is mcafee heating and air conditioning you know tyler if it's hot in your house or sometimes a little bit too cold don't well, try to build a fire in the living room if you don't have a fireplace you need to call mcafee heating and air they will be there anytime. That's right. I don't know his mission or his little catchphrase. But right, right. It is. It's probably something along the lines of, call us, we do good work. Yes. How about something like that? Wouldn't be far off cry right from it. Yeah. McAfee's been a longtime supporter of Dayton Christian Athletics. In fact, just to go one step further, um, I'm new to the school. I looked in some old paperwork that goes back quite a few years and when you know, listed right there as a, a supporter still. And uh, one that would give a, a sizable donation was Greg McAfee and McAfee Heating and Air. So longtime supporter. We appreciate him for doing that. So back to the court and back to the action that you see here. Oh, Toll, again, calls in a headache for all defense. And she does a great job, but they're going to call a foul on her. Getting a little handsy, although I, I I do like the effort. Yeah, I mean that's a that's one of them ones. If my opinion, you gotta let them play through. Um, you know that's just kind of a ticky tack kind of foul. But I'm no expert, so. <laughs> Ferryman and Carver, your leading scores for Dayton Christian, so you need points from them right now in the fourth quarter, being down by four. I, I get the hint that Middletown Christian's kind of taking what they're going to, you know, what Dayton Christian's going to give them. They're kind of slowing it down here a little bit. Sequest gets the ball back after almost losing it out of bounds. She's going to go all the way to the other side of the court, recovers this time, and gets the ball to Toll. Now, this to me is a good possession. You need to be slow. You need to be methodical. you got to work for the good shot. Ventura tries to drive the baseline. She goes underneath. Geis blocks her, but it goes into the hands of Miller. Miller to Ferryman. Ferryman resets the offense. I like that drive by Ventura, but she's got to do a pump fake and, you know, get that clean shot. Yeah, or get, you know, get past her a little quicker. Nice cut there by Ferryman. <coughs> Ferryman there with the nice cut and the, unfortunately was not able to finish. So instead of being a, a cap or a, you know, lid on the bucket, Seems like the, the bucket has something on each side of it for the Dayton Christian Warriors. Mm -hmm. Miller, with the rebound, goes to Sequest, meaning they're not missing in the basket. They're missing off the side of the basket. Yeah. yeah. The angle of their shots are, you know, they're hitting the lower part of the square instead of the upper. There you go. Yep. Toll dribbles to Ferryman, takes her time, surveys the defense, tries to find an opening, makes one turn, Geis kind of swipes at the ball. I don't believe made contact. The ball's going to go out of bounds, and you're going to get a timeout from Coach Bach. That's a good timeout, 37-33. You're not going to take timeouts home with you, so why not take a moment, have a conversation with the team, give them a second to rest. And while they have a second to rest, let's recap some of the scores right now. So the away team, which is the Middletown Christian Eagles, Whitney Shower leads with 15 points. Hannah Geis has 14 there are two other Eagles players with four and four apiece. Sydney Clemens now up to 11 points. Ferryman up to 10. And then four, three, and five are additional scoring by the Lady Warriors. So we appreciate all of you that have joined us. If you'd like to send your shot out, there's still time left. 107 left on the clock. And you can call or text 513-655-7438. Tyler, we appreciate you coming out on this Tuesday night after a long day of work, back-to-back -back games. You are the Iron Man of color analysis. Well, I appreciate that. I didn't call myself the Iron Man, maybe, but I guarantee you uh, Madison's at home laughing Yeah. as she's already texting me saying that. Yeah. She can't give us a shout-out, but she can make fun of us a bit. There you go. I'm sure there's an appreciation for the effort. I've, we received yes. a text message that says they appreciate the effort. 107 left. Coach Bach trying to put something together that's going to get a turnover and a quick bucket. I mean, it's one score, and all of a sudden it's a two-point game. That's all you need. Toll running hip to hip. Trap defense into the hands of LaRue. Geis to LaRue. 
Got to get a turnover here if they're just going to eat clock. Ventura, Geis, doesn't need that shot, but she's going to take it. Hannah Geis comes underneath. And that ball goes in. That's a big that's bucket. A, yeah, it's a big bucket there for Middletown Christian. Six points. You don't need them all in one, but Craver, uh, yes, with the score. So now 39-35. Might just be the spark. The Warriors need it. Guys, Ferryman, she knew what she did. She, you, yeah. could, you could see she looked at the ref and like, yeah, okay, you got me. All right, so losing our, uh, <laughs> losing our uh, sound for a second, but we're back. Snowman taking away our power. Yeah, the snowman. Believe it or not, the snowman took away our power. So, 39-35. The first shot is missed by the, I believe, younger guys there. I thought maybe Jesus had came back. And yeah. Just sitting, oh, oh. Here we go. That's a bucket for Middletown Christian. 40-35. Craver says, give me the rock, coach. I'm ready to go. As she drives, she stops. Gets it out to Toll. Toll kicks it out to Ferryman. Ferryman trying to find a position to drive in. 10 seconds. Got to get a shot up. Fortunately, five seconds. And a foul by number five. That's LaRue. He's going to bring the ball out, out of bounds. 40-35. You need a quick three-point attempt. And either you're going to have to foul, take a shot. Oh, timeout by Coach Bach. That's the right thing to do. So 3.2 seconds left. You're looking for a, a quick shot, so you need a set that gives a shot to the first person with their hands on the ball. So run a couple picks, run a slip, and then when you when you get your hands on the ball, you got to shoot. Yeah, and uh, don't think I was going to say there's not enough time to do a pump fake and shoot. Hopefully, maybe you get the old-fashioned four-point play, but um, only 3.2. Don't know if that's possible. Yeah, I'd say try try your best to get one up. If it goes in. It's going to be a three-point attempt, and then you got to call as either a foul and take your chances they're not going to make them on the other end, or you got to get the quick turnover and the putback. So more than likely, this next shot will determine whether this game is going to go the way of the Eagles or the way of the Warriors. Right now, a five-point lead by the Eagles. Coach Hayes brings his court or team back onto the court, as does Coach Bach. Toll will take the ball out of bounds. First touch shot here has to be for the Eagles, or for the Warriors. There it is. Clemens turns. That ball's going to go over the backboard. And unfortunately, that will end the game. Middletown Christian stays undefeated in league play. But a scrappy Dayton Christian Warrior team only loses by five and holds them, if I'm not mistaken, to the lowest point total that they've had so far this year. Yeah, very good defensive effort. Effort by both teams was, uh, you know, unparalleled. Um, unfortunately, you know, unfortunately for Dayton Christian, it didn't go their way tonight. Um, Middletown Christian walking out with a W, but uh, there's always the next game. Elena Geis, unfortunately, already on crutches, so we wish her nothing but a quick healing. And we want to thank our man, um, Adam Manaker running the production, doing his thing. We appreciate that. We appreciate Adam for everything he did tonight. And we appreciate you, Tyler. We appreciate all of those that are watching. We're going to catch you after the Christmas break. So we wish you nothing but a happy holiday season, a Merry Christmas, and remember that there's only one reason for this season. And what is it? Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Have a great night and a great week.